Let's go live. Let's go live. Do 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 do. Let's go. Let me not shake too much. Oh. Mmm. Look, <laughs> if you're familiar with our Tuesday takeover, then you know we are norm we're normally live at 12:30 p.m. Eastern, 9:30 a.m. PST. But I woke up at four something this morning with excruciating pain in my arm. Well, okay. All transparency, I've been dealing with uh, an arm issue, neck issue for the last week. But, you know, I still showed up to work. <laughs> but this morning, I was just like, no, I have to go to the doctor. They had only one appointment available. So I took that appointment. And I said, you guys can wait. <laughs> because I prioritize my health. I prioritize my health. As you should, too. I was like, no, I'm not going to wait till next week. Because, you know, sometimes when you wait... And then all of a sudden you, you go and it, then the pain's not there anymore. And then he can't figure out what's going on. So I said, no, let me go to the doctor and let him figure out what's going on. I'm okay. I'm not dying. <laughs> but he did give me a cortisone shot in my shoulder. <laughs> I can still fight though. So don't, don't test me, New York. Don't play. Don't, I can still fight. I don't, mind you, I don't need to fight. <laughs> Anyways. I say all that to say that's part of the reason why we are late today. Something's going on with this left side of my body. We will figure it out. We will figure it out. You know, I go to, I do all the things. I, I, I go to the doctor, but I also do, you know, acupuncture and Pilates. So they're going to get me together. They're going to get me get together. Danny says, is, is it from working out? My doctor asked the same thing. I was like, no, I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I'm getting older. I didn't do anything. And I, I, I'm not even a sports nista. I, yeah, look, congratulations to South Carolina's uh, women's basketball team. Congratulations to them. Look, we just, we're just starting. Look, we're just going to start. No countdown today. <laughs> no countdown today. We're just going to start. <laughs> yeah, no, not get well soon. Thank you, Lily. <laughs> that sounds so bad when someone says get well soon. I don't know. I guess normally we, we say that when, when it's terminal. Well, I'm grateful to know that so far, no, it's not. But I can, oof, look, oof. I'm going to be all right, though. I'm going to be all right. I'm such a baby. <laughs> I'm such a baby. Men are the worst when it comes to pain. I can admit it. I can admit it. Anyone else? Women, you, you, are, able to you are able to deliver children. I can't even imagine. Anytime that I am in pain, I'm like, I'm like a little baby. I'm like, oh. What's happening? It's all right, though. I'm all right. I'm all right. Luckily, I don't have a job where I'm lifting stuff. I have a job where I'm talking stuff. Guys, if you are unfamiliar with our Tuesday Takeover, this is where we talk about a variety of pop culture news and reality television. Luckily, I don't have a lot of reality television to talk about today. Yeah, I'm, I am so done with 90 Day Fiance. If you follow me on Twitter, I gave you a hint last night because I was trying to watch the latest episode of 90 Day Fiance and I just could not get into it. I, I wanted to throw a shoe at the television. Mind you, I didn't have shoes on because I don't wear shoes in my house. I wear slippers, but I don't wear shoes. I should have took, took my chancleta and threw it at the television. I'm so over it. I'm so over it. Thank you, not, not, uh, Naima? 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 She says, Kemp, you are not old. You're right. You're right. You're only as old as you feel. Right, Don Lemon? All right. Let me start there. <laughs> let me start there. So, you know, we always start our Tuesday takeover with some good news. So, Don Lemon, we have some good news. He just had a wedding over the weekend. Yes, to Tom, Tom Malone. They've been dating for, I mean, well, they've been engaged for five years. And Don decided this was the right time. And he had a star-studded wedding this weekend here in New York City. And he had everybody and their mama there, including Clive Davis. <laughs> well, you know, Clive Davis is a part of the LGBT com com community now. Now he's come out the closet. But there's a lot of other things being said about Clive Davis. When are we going to get surviving Clive Davis? Uh we'll move on. <laughs> because this is good news. This is good news. We want, we want to celebrate... 58-year-old, look, 58-year-old, not Tom, 58-year-old <laughs> Don Lemon married, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it, married 
40 year old Tom Malone. I for 18 year age gap. I have no issue with the age gap. Whatever. We were just talking about Dre and Michelle and that age gap. I think it's different when you're when you've gone through the milestones in life. <laughs> you've gone through your thirties, you know, it's a little different. It's not like the Aoki and Vittorio Asaf situation. It's a little different, but I did not realize that there was an 18 year age gap. They look like they are the same age. They look like they are the same age. And I said, you know, cause I'm nice. I said, you know, good for you, Don, Don, the moisturizer is working. And when I say moisturizer, I'm talking about that $25 million that he received from CNN. <laughs> moisturize with all that cash. Moisturize. I'm being facetious. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. But I just did not realize the age gap between Tom, Tom Malone and Don Lemon. They look very cute. They have their pooches at the wedding. They have their custom suits. I, I love how I mentioned only one of the guests that were invited there. He had a bunch of stars. He had a bunch of people from The View there. He had a lot of, you know, Don Lemon's been in the business a long time, so he knows a lot of different people. So uh, everyone came to the wedding. Everyone came to the wedding. But the most shocking thing to me was the age gap, and I didn't realize there was an age gap. But congratulations to Don Lemon and Tom Malone. Mazel tov. Okay. <laughs> Some other good, I don't even have my notes open. Let me open my notes. Oh, there we go. Um, congratulations to Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj is having a major, major win when it comes to her sold out tour. She's had what, 17, 18 shows at this point. Monica has been doing a, a, the damn thing I hear. I haven't seen it. I only seen clips, but according to tour data, they said that pink Friday two is the most successful tour by a female rapper in history with $34.9 million from 220 thousand tickets sold in the first 17 shows nikki has also earned the highest grossing concert of all time on march 30th with 2.8 million at madison madison square garden this is her highest grossing let me just clarify not the highest grossing this is her highest grossing um show all right so congratulations to Nicki Minaj. Look, I, I've only heard really good. I mean, of course, the Internet will find all kinds of negative things to say when it comes to anyone. But, you know, we this is our good news section. Congratulations to Nicki Minaj. The tour is going well for her. And look, oh, wait, I forgot to send that photo to myself. I just want to say shout out to Missy Elliott, Sierra, Busta Rhymes and Timbaland. They announced the out of this world tour that's coming this summer as well. Come on now. Hold on. I, I got to get the picture, y'all. You got to see this picture because they are out of this world. Here it is. I got it. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Come on. I am so happy for Missy Elliott. She is an icon. She is a le legend. She is the moment. Okay? She is the moment. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let me put, put, bring this up. I want y'all to see them. Oh, this is not great. <laughs> Look, this is not a great uh, photo of them. Hold on. Hold on. Let me move this over so we can have. I had a better quality photo, but I don't have it on my computer. So bear with me. Bear with me, y'all. So Missy Ellie posted just yesterday that announcing this tour with Ciara, Buster Rhymes, and special guest Timbaland. If you have not seen Missy Elliott on, on, in concert, I haven't seen her face to face. But I saw her, was, it was her um, Essence Fest performance. You would have thought it was her Super Bowl. Her mind really is in the future. Because that performance alone said to me, and look, we've seen some amazing performances from Missy Elliott. We've seen some amazing performances from Ciara. But this Missy Elliott performance was something else at Essence Fest. If you were there, you, you can confirm. This announcement of this tour, this out of out of this world tour. First of all, they're dressed up like they're from uh Dunder <laughs> wait, wait, what is it called? Thunderdome. <laughs> I'm here for this. I'm here for we have a lot of concerts to go to this summer. We've got the Escape concert with SWV 702 Total and Maya. We've got now Missy Elliott, Sierra, Buster Rhymes and Timbaland on tour. 
there's a lot of tours happening and I want to go to all of them. But this one, I feel like this is us being set up for the announcement for next year that Missy Elliott is going to be the halftime uh, performer. She needs to be. I know she already performed with Katy Perry, but we only got a little bit of Missy. We need a full-fledged Missy Super Bowl moment so she can bring out Busta Rhymes, so she can bring out Sierra, so she can bring out Timbaland. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say this, but I don't really mean it. <laughs> or as Dr. Heavenly would say, I'm going to say it and then I'm going to take it back. Um, An Aaliyah, uh, Aaliyah hologram. Okay, maybe not that, but some sort of tribute to Aaliyah. Some sort of tribute has to be done to Aaliyah. So I need this halftime performance, please and thank you. She can even bring Pharrell out because he's from Virginia. Come on, I need this. Can, can we make this happen? Someone at Rock Nation, I already did it this morning. <laughs> At Rock Nation, we need this to happen. Rock Nation produces the halftime show. Jay-Z produces the halftime show. I need... Oh, yeah, Maxwell and Jasmine, Jasmine Sullivan. Thank you for reminding us. We talked about that um, on Tuesday Takeover. They're coming out this, this summer as well. Damn, they're taking all my money. Take it, take it, take it. I want to go see all of it. <laughs> I was kidding about the hologram, y'all. I was kidding. I'm taking it back. I was kidding about the hologram, but I need some sort of tribute to Aaliyah. There's no way that we're going to have, look, we're planning, we're planning Missy's um, halftime show. There's no way I'm going to have Aaliyah, well, Missy and Timbaland doing this halftime show without some sort of tribute to Aaliyah. We need that to happen. Now her music's available on streaming. Can you imagine? I know, I know, I know. We can talk about Blackground Records and, and that uncle, but, <laughs> but. They can work out those details. They can work, the family and, and the uncle can work out those details. I want to see that happen. I want to see that happen. Missy, please. Well, it's, it's not in Missy's hands. Rock Nation, please. NFL, please. We need this to happen. Oh, is it not our turn this, this year? They were like, oh, you already had a black person last year? Was this relationship between Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey setting us up for Taylor Swift performing at next year's halftime show? I guess. <sighs> I guess. All right. Congratulations to Missy Elliott, Sierra, Busta Rhymes, and Timbaland. Out of this world tour. Tickets go on sale this week. Or today, I believe. So congratulations to them. I, I got to get tickets. I got to get. Who's coming with me, though? Who's coming? Who's coming with me? All right. Someone said Nicki Minaj is coming back um, May 1st. Didn't she already have a show in New York? She's coming back. Oh, Magoo. Oh, Magoo. Rest in peace. They have to do pay tribute to Magoo as well. All right. That's a little bit of the good news. I have some more good news that we need to talk about. Beyonce, 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 Beyonce. Have you guys listened to the Beyonce album? We did a special podcast episode talking all about Beyonce and her new album, Cowboy Carter. There are so many nuggets because she's such a Virgo. There are so many nuggets of, you could tell that Beyonce did the homework when it comes to this project. There are, there's so much history that she's, she's talking about in here and using in here. There's so much subliminal lyrics in regards to social justice that she's talking about when it comes to race and when it comes to her being locked out of country music just so much well she has a number one album in the country we talked about that last week sold over 400,000 units all right it's, it's did better than than uh, renaissance all right so she also has become the first black woman with a number one country album Do you have a favorite song? I, I, if you listen to the podcast, I already told you what my favorite songs are from the project. But, you know, they're changing. Because as I'm learning the little nuggets about certain songs and I'm listening to certain songs, congratulations to Rumi. Rumi has surpassed her sister, Blue Ivy, in regards to being the youngest artist to ever be on the Hot 100. Congratulations. All right. 
I'm looking forward to the live performances. A lot of people are nervous about about Beyonce announcing a tour. And when I say nervous, they're nervous for their pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you were expecting this to be a full-on country album, no. It definitely has a lot more country on this album versus some of her other projects. I can't wait to see what this live performance situation is going to be because Beyonce is an incredible live performer. Um, K. Michelle is working on her country album. She's been honing this country album for a long time. I can't wait to hear that. Congratulations to all the other black country artists that were featured on the project and they were at the Country Music Awards this past week as well. This, is, this has really helped them be highlighted in their own genre that they've been trying to be highlighted for years. Congrats to them. Because even, because look, I love me some country music. Sidebar, I got a country song too on Spotify. It's called Will You. Beyonce, I've been doing country music too, girl. <laughs> if, you, if you need somebody to come and do a little backup. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> Destiny, if you follow me on Twitter, you already know. I was, look, I was talking about Riverdance this morning. <laughs> I was talking about that, that song. Because it has, it has country elements, but then it has those ratchet elements that you love from Beyonce when she gets ratchet. It's like, bounce on it. Never mind. I, I can't even sing the song. It's too X-rated. Kids sometimes listen to me while you guys are washing dishes or doing work. <laughs> Um, Miss Rose says, Blackbird is my favorite Beatles song, and I love B's rendition, which she featured multiple black female artists on there as well. She also introduced the world, even though he's been doing it for a long time, to Shabuzi. Shabuzi's on the album multiple times. Sidebar, Shabuzi was, was shooting his shot at uh, Lotto, okay? And <laughs> he didn't realize that Lotto has a boyfriend, a boyfriend that people have thought is 21 Savage, but is 21 Savage married? She's never opened, you know, she's alluded to having a boyfriend. However, we've never met him. We've never met him, which I don't, I'm not mad at that. I'm, look, I'm probably mad at it if, if he's a married man, but I'm not mad at her keeping her personal life personal. You know what I mean? So I'm enjoying this Beyonce project. I think the Beyonce project is very different for her. I, I'm enjoying it. It's growing on me because if you listen to the podcast episode, I told you guys initially, I was like, eh, I don't know. A lot of people are saying, and Beyonce says this herself, that Cowboy Carter was, was supposed to come out first before Renaissance. And now people are listening to it and they're like, oh, it makes so much more sense hearing Cowboy Carter. They kind of wish Cowboy Carter came out first, but Beyonce released Renaissance because we were just coming out of the pandemic. She said, we need to dance. Well, here's the thing, y'all. For those that are upset that Cowboy Carter came out after Renaissance, you can listen to Cowboy Carter and then listen to Renaissance. Do a whole little playlist. And then you can have that experience. And there is a connection between both projects. She is one clever Virgo. Am I surprised? No. Not at all. Not at all. So congratulations to Beyonce. She's setting all kinds of records. Not only does she is she the first black woman to have a number one album in country music on the country music charts, she also has charted 106 songs on the Hot 100. No one really has done that besides her husband, who has 105. All right. And again, congratulations to Rumi, who is now the youngest artist to ever be fe featured on Billboard. All right. Go, go for them. Like, good for them. Let me just say thank you. We had a couple of Super Chats guys. You're just joining us. This is our Tuesday takeover where we're talking about Beyonce. We're talking about a bunch of good news. A bunch of good news. You always start off this show with some good news. Thank you, Joe, for the Super Chat. Joe says, the Wake Empire throws some pu punches, though. He ain't hurting nobody. Come come at me, bro. Why are you always coming for me, Joe? <laughs> Why are you always coming for me? As, I, as I'm ailing. Look, as I'm... Look, see? Men can't take pain. <laughs> They'll say, Julie, thank you so much for the super chat. Julie says the Iowa graduate wants to congratulate South. See, see, this is this is how you do it. She's not a sore loser because you know every single week she's been bigging up Iowa, the Iowa um, women's basketball team. They lost, <laughs> <laughs> and 
and South Carolina won. So congratulations to the South Carolina women's basketball team for winning the NCAA championships. Oh, wait, who won the men's? Wasn't th that last night? Don't ask me how I know. TikTok told me. <laughs> Didn't the men win? Uh, who won last night for the men? We've all only talked about the women here. And I love the fact that women are getting highlighted in basketball a lot more now. All right. Uh, Taria, thank you so much. How many Tarias do we have on the channel? We know our friend Taria from What Else Is Going On Podcast. We have the other Taria that's normally in the chat. And now we got another Taria. Or is this the same Taria? No, it's spelled differently. All right. Taria says, seen Nikki front row in Newark. Love her since um, 07. I heard nothing but good things about the performance. I Look, anytime we are setting records like this, no matter how you feel about the person, this is where I try to separate the person from, from the music. UConn won last night. Northeast, congratulations. <laughs> UConn's men's basketball team. Congratulations. Congratulations. <sighs> I used to like basketball. When Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen used to play, I used to love me some basketball. I used to only watch the championships, though. And, I, of course, I wasn't betting. I was young. But at the same time, I, I liked watching it. And I used to like playing the game. What was the name of that game? You guys will remember the, the popular basketball game for, like, um, was it for Sega Genesis? I can't remember. Here I go showing my age. Did you, did you know about Sega Genesis, um, Jalen Green? <laughs> I kid, I kid. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Uh, Dr. Freed, I love that we have so many doctors that watch. Uh, I love Beyonce's album and the fact that, it, that it's upsetting so many people. Why are they upset? Love your channel. Going in and see, see my next patient. What kind of doctor are you, Dr. Frida? I want to know. We have a lot of doctors that watch the channel. I don't know why because I, no, um, I, I have no knowledge on anything uh, medical besides my medical ailment, Dr. Frida. <laughs> Not playing. Anyways, thank you so much, Dr. Frieda. We appreciate it. Look, I, I haven't focused on the negativity in regards to people that have something to say about Beyonce's project. And when I say the negativity, I'm not talking about people that just don't like the music or are not a fan of the songs. No, I'm talking about the racist comments. <laughs> I'm not giving them any light. I'm not giving them any light. So anyways... So in, in the good news, congratulations to the South, South, Carolina, South Carolina women's basketball team and uh, shout out to the UConn uh, men's basketball team. Congratulations on, on that as well. All right. NBA Live. I think that was it. I think that was it. <laughs> Look, I think that was it. Temi, thank you so much for the super chat. Temi says, if Beyonce was not a singer, she would be a super villain. Uh, wait, meticulous. Oh, it, a Virgo. <laughs> that is no shade, Virgo. I tell you, when you want to get something done, get you a Virgo. NBA Jam. That was it. NBA Jam. NBA Jam. Okay. Let me move on. I used to love me some... I would still play NBA Jam. I think I even have a basketball game for my Switch that I never play because I never have time. <sighs> I'm going to change that, though. I'm gonna, I need to change my language. I always. I have more than enough time. I have more than enough time. Guys, as always, when we talk about our good news, I want to hear about your good news. So live chat, those of you watching on any platform right now, because we're live on multiple, let me know what your good news is today. And if you're part of the replay crew, I love hearing your good news. And I think sometimes people don't think about their own good news until someone asks them, what is your good news? Be sure to share it in the comments. Okay. All right. M more good news. I want to say congratulations to Dr. Nicole from Real Housewives of Miami. Speaking of doctors, she gave birth early. Look, I'm happy that the baby is safe and healthy. I'm happy that Dr. Nicole is safe, safe and healthy. But you know what my gripe is, right? You know what my gripe is, right? My gripe with this uh, news is the fact the baby is an Aries. <laughs> <laughs> she was supposed to be a Taurus. We talked about this. She, Dr. Nicole was due. She, she gave birth early, but she, she was supposed to have a Taurus, but now she has an Aries and I love Aries and I love Aries women. So she's, she look, the baby's okay with Genevieve, Genevieve, Genevieve's okay with me. All right. So congratulations to Dr. Nicole and, and her Aries. Wait, I wonder how, I wonder what her son sign is. Her son, her actual son. Can you guys find out for me? Because she's a Virgo, and what sign is Anthony? And now she has another. She has a fire sign. Doctor Nicole, that baby's gonna rule you. You know you bossy Aries. <laughs> that baby's gonna rule 
you. I know I have nothing but Aries around me, and I have an Aries niece. I know. Ball C. Just saying. <laughs> all right. All right. Oh, okay. Maybe so she delivered early on purpose. You know what? Come on. No. No, she really did have a scary. She shared this on her social media about taking a break from social media because she had she had went through a very traumatic experience with with her birth. So I'm happy everyone is healthy. Congratulations to Dr. Nicole and the family. All right. I'm sure we'll we'll hear more about it during the hopefully the new season of Real Housewives of Miami. Virgos are bars. Seven says Virgos are bossy, bossy too. They are. <laughs> they are. I'm 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 not gonna deny it. I'm not a Virgo, but I know plenty of Virgos. They are they're bossy too. Hence why Below Deck. Let's move into Below Deck and then we will get into some more hot topics, guys, for our Tuesday takeover. We're live for a special time at a special time because, look, I was at a doctor earlier. But here we are. We're still doing it. We're still doing it. So I want to talk about Below Deck. I don't have a lot to say. Captain Carey, you can go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I try to give him a chance. You know, every single week I said, I, he's nice. But he's not good reality television. He's probably a fantastic captain, but he's a terrible reality TV star. And normally, I think we probably wouldn't care if we had more substance, more uh, reality TV stars on, on the cast, but we don't. We don't. And I told you, Jill, Jill Zarin being featured um, during this last week's episode and this week's episode, I think they thought we don't have a season. We need to bring someone in. And they brought Jill Zarin in. And I know everyone said Jill Zarin, that's who she is. That's how they're not surprised that she was behaving this way. Oh no. You see in this week's episode when she's leaving, she turned that up for the cameras. She look, we know she's naturally annoying, but she turned it up for the cameras. And I don't believe she knew, knew those people. I believe they all were trying to, they all just got to know her here during, during this filming. She didn't know those people. Like, I didn't get that energy like she knew those people like that. Just saying. But this season of Below Deck, I'm still going to watch. I'm not, because Below Deck has been more consistent than it's not. This is like the first season where I feel like it's not doing what I thought it would do. And I love me some Fraser, but Sunny Girl... Look, Sunny's all in her feelings because they now have a new uh, uh, stew. And her name is Paris. Paris was actually the ex-girlfriend. Remember uh, the other straight guy that Frasier hooked up with during previous season? That was his, that's his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> Small world, huh? So he already, Ben is flirting with her. Well, not flirting with her. Sunny's in her feelings. Ben is just touchy-feely, uh, Nick, like from Summer House Martha's Vineyard. I Even this week's episode, the only part of this, this week's episode of Below Deck that captured my attention was when Jill was there, to be honest with you. Do you even understand what's happening between Frasier and, and Barbary? I don't get what the beef is. And she's a Virgo. Look, she's a Virgo too. And Virgos can be bossy. But in this particular instance, I'm trying to figure out what exactly do you not like about Barbie Fraser? Like, I'm not understanding this conflict. And I also didn't love how, how Fraser, who is her boss, handled that conversation on the beach. I was like, you, I know you're off duty, but technically on a job like this, you're never really off duty. I didn't like the way that he spoke to her. I don't think she's a great personality. Don't get me wrong. Like, I don't think she's a great person, but I also don't feel like we've seen people be insubordinate. We've seen people be rude. We've been, we've seen people be terrible stews, lazy. And yes, she dropped the ball during this last charter a little bit. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't get what, what you guys are uh, uh, excited about. Like, I don't get what what's uh, bothering each other. And she gets so emotional. She calls her mom. She's like, I, I want to go. I just want to go. He wants to fire her. Uh, I can always trust Janelle to find the, the, the tea. Uh, Janelle says, Dr. Nicole's son, Grayson, is a Pisces, and her fiancé, Anthony, is also a Virgo. Also, a Virgo can only stand another Virgo. <laughs> no, Virgos are actually good matches with Pisces. Um, Tauruses, they say, but I don't see a lot of Tauruses and Virgos together. Like, we get along, but dating-wise, no. Um, ooh, I love <laughs> Kay Brown says... Frasier is the Karen this season, always complaining. I think Frasier wants to be 
I think he's aspiring to be a reality TV star, but also to be on the level of a K Chastain when it comes to being a Chief Stew. I feel like he feels that he has a lot to prove. Foxy said he was mean to her. I thought he was mean. And you know I love me some Fraser. But even I was like, Fraser, why are you talking? Look, why are you talking to her this way? I'm trying to understand why are you talking to her this way? It wasn't a great episode, though. If I had to rate the episode, it was like a five and a half. It wasn't a great episode. It hasn't been a great season. Um, Janelle says, no Aries. No, I love. are you an Aries, Janelle? This explains a lot. Yep, I'm an Aries, rising and moon. That explains a lot. And my mom is an Aries. Aries people are fabulous. I never, y'all know I love an Aries. I have a lot of people around me that are Aries. Aries women. Aries men. I don't have a lot of Aries men around me, so I can't say if they're trash or not. You guys let me know. I love that we can talk about this. Hey, Durant. Durant says Virgos are great at so many things except relationships. Really? I, have I dated a Virgo? I don't think I've dated a Virgo. Like, I've been friends with Virgos, but I don't think I've had like a serious relationship with... No, definitely not haven't had a serious relationship with a Virgo. <sighs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, insert female username. <laughs> I love that as your name. Thank you for the super chat. They say, hi, love. So isn't scissoring your country song? I'm working on it. I'm working on a follow-up to my song, Will You? Scissoring. <laughs> Um, Erica, thank you so much for the super chat. Yes, we Aries are bossy. Look, you're the first sign of the zodiac. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. At least you own it. At least you own it. All right. All right, let's move on. Um, because I have nothing more to say. Do I have anything? Okay. In this particular episode of Below Deck, one of the big challenges that they have as a crew is the chef. The chef was having a lot of struggles during the sea this particular charter. And some of that last week was because Barbie screwed up the, um, the the orders and things like that. And he has dyslexia, so that greatly affects him. All right. So he's still struggling, but he, you know, of course, always by the end of the charter, he, he gets it right. People are, oh, I love you. You did fantastic. I don't care. I don't care. Look, he probably makes fantastic food. We've had some really problematic, interesting uh, personalities when it comes to chefs. Where's Ben? Like, this season's not doing it for me. I'm going to keep watching, though. I'm going to keep watching. We, we shall see. We shall see. I still love me some Below Day. This is like the very first season where I'm not enjoying it, but this is also the first season without Captain Lee. I'm sorry, Carrie. You're not doing it for me either. Sorry. <laughs> Let me take a sip. Mm. Hey Deb, Deb says um Aries is, is a cardinal sign as well. They are. They are. All right. Where do I want to go from here? Where do I want to go from here? You know what? We'll talk about 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, just so we can get this garbage TV out the way. I did not watch 90 Day Fia 90 Day The Single Life Um Tell All Part 4. I don't know. Honestly, I didn't plan to watch it because I told you I was done with the with the show, but I did double check right before the live, to, you know, just to see. And I didn't see the new episode. Maybe it was just a glitch. I'm sure there was a new episode, but I was like, I don't, I'm not going to talk about 90 Days of Single Life. I don't know why you why you guys got a four part reunion anyway. Who cares? Who who cares? Hey, DD says Fraser has every reason to complain. He has to manage the interior and the chef. Well, no, he could complain. I just don't understand his issues with Barbie. Like I understood his issues with Barbie initially. But this week, I was like, okay, where, what are we doing? Like, I don't understand why we're mad at each other right now. It feels a little forced. It feels a little performative. Just saying. Uh, Bridget says, Geminis are good with Tauruses because someone in the relationship has to be grounded. Because Geminis are buzzing around, talking and playing and talking. <laughs> um, I don't see a lot of Tauruses and Geminis together. I don't see that a lot. I've dated a Gemini. I mean, I can see how it works, but no. Look, no. <laughs> uh, don't shut up. Shut up. SC says, I see it. It, it is a fifth part next week. You're, you're, please tell me you're lying. Uh, NYC says, it has five. I'm not talking about 90 Day the Single Life. Five part tell all for this season of, of 90 Day the Single Life? This season? 
Really? Five parts. I'm not talking about it. I, I, I actually think that I might stop talking about 90 Day Fiance. Let's talk about 90 Day Fiance uh, Happily Ever After. Let me tell you, I, I still don't. It's her name, Nicole. She has red hair during this during the episode. She's married to Mahmoud. Is it Nicole? I always forget her name, but I never forget how problematic she is. She is gaslighting this man since he landed. I don't care how you guys feel about his religion or his culture. She knew what she was signing up for. But here's the thing. Now he's coming to your country. He's trying to make this marriage work. I'm not saying that he's perfect. He's not. But girl, the minute he lands, she's triggering him with her outfits. Uh, oh, you should have slept on the plane. Oh, he's he's looking at this woman in in um oh, what is oh I can't think of the word. You guys know what I'm talking about. But he he sees familiar familiar eh, familiarity. There we go. I can't even speak today, y'all. Um, so he sees someone that he can relate to, and she's thinking that he's giving her no. She's not thinking that because she's just delusional. She's thinking that he, um he that she's giving a, a, a googly eyes. No, he sees something familiar. She is so annoying to me. And I don't want to watch her because it feels very performative. Because if this is real, a hijab, thank you. And uh, I couldn't go, like, what's going on with words today with me? A hijab. He saw someone with a, with a hijab and he's like, oh, someone that I can relate to. She's like, oh, oh, if you want, if you want a good Muslim woman, you, go, you can go find one. Mind you, this is 24 hours. He's there 24 hours. She works the hell out of my nerve. I wouldn't be mad if he left her. I don't know why he's even with her. I don't even know why he's even with her. And I, I literally, after watching these first couple of episodes of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After, I, rem I was reminded. Like, I completely forgot about their storyline a little bit. But then I was reminded seeing... After every corner, she's trying to trigger him. They're going out to this party, his welcome party with her friends, and she's purposely wearing something with her, her back out. Okay, she's in America. She should be able to wear what she wants. But she also signed up to be in a relationship with this man. This, this is not the first time that they've had a conversation about his religion, his culture, and things like that. So she knows that he's not going to like this. Is it, his, is it her right to wear what she wants? Yes, but it feels like she's doing it on purpose to gaslight him. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's it's okay. Girl, wear what you want. And you, yes, and she called him a womanizer. Like, these are big words to be saying about your husband on national television. However, the audience isn't dumb. They're all looking at you like, girl. And, and I think I'm mad that you're making me defend Mahmoud. <laughs> I'm mad that you're making me defend him because in in this particular instance, he's right. It's like, I'm only here 24. I'm poor, look, poor Mahmoud got lost. I'm like, where are you going anyway, Mahmoud, at this point? Uh, Green Girl says, I'm on my time to adjust. Not at all. Not at all. Oh, Semhar says, I watched the single life reunion, so I couldn't also watch 90 Day Fiance. It's too much for me. I'm over it. See, and I did the reverse. I watched 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After because it's newer. So I was like, all right. And I was like, I'm done after three, a three-part reunion. Now you're telling me it's five parts? <sighs> I'm just happy for Sean Robinson because I know she's getting paid for those uh, five parts. <sighs> all right. <laughs> Guys, you're just joining us. We are talking about the latest episode of 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. Let me just... I'm briefly going to... Okay, Ashley... Let me just say this about Ashley the Witch. So Ashley the Witch goes into a church. Did you guys know it? I don't care about Ashley and Emmanuel's relationship. I don't care about their relationship. I'm not going to talk about their relationship. I, You like it. We love it. You, he doesn't want to tell you about his kids um, or you to his kids. And y'all have been dating for years and you just got married and they know nothing about you. Girl, you like it. I love it. I don't care. I'm not talking about that. But when she walks up into that church... <laughs> Why? Because she's a witch. She walks up into that church like she's going to disintegrate walking through those doors. <laughs> so for me, I don't care what they talked about. Yes, she's trying to be open to his religion because he tries, tries to be open to her religion. I don't care about any of that. It is her reaction walking into that church. 
and then and the entire situation, the the whole mass that that they that they go through. So she's sort of like making all kinds of faces. To me, Ashley is perfect ninety day fiance TLC reality TV, but her story is a lackluster for me. It's just her reaction to things. Her commentary and confessionals are funny to me. But other than that, I could care less about her relationship with Manuel. I don't care. I don't care. But that church scene, that church scene, <laughs> homegirl was like making all kinds. I looking around, looking at the, she's like, what's that? Looking at the Bible up up on the altar. She's like, what's that? Are you telling me you've never been to a, a, a church? You did not come out of, come out of the womb a witch. Okay. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Ashley, you did not come out. I'm sure your mother is Christian. <laughs> She's like, what's that at the front? She's looking at the, the, everything around her. She's looking at everybody. And, she, and she's like so awkward. But I like her. Like for me, that was funny. That was funny to me. All right. Um, okay. I can be honest with you guys, right? It's just us here. It's just a hundred and something of you guys watching on Twitch and Twitter and 1,600 of you watching on, on YouTube and Facebook. Um, I, I, Jasmine's scenes make me physically angry. But you know, we've been talking about Jasmine and Gino for years at this point. I told you last week, I, their scenes annoy the hell out of me. <sighs> Look, we find out this week that Jasmine also suffers from alopecia. I never believe anything from from this from from this cast of folks. Okay, as you know, part of this story is th in these last couple of episodes is the fact that Gino did not include her children on the K one visa, so now they have to pay more money in order to bring the children here. But now it could take a lot longer. Okay, and he doesn't want to pay the money. He's like, I don't, ha I don't have the money. <laughs> I don't have the money, and she gets. Every single week, Jasmine is crying. I don't, at this point, I think she could do it at the drop of a hat. Now, I don't think she does do it at, at, at the drop of a hat. And literally, I literally watched this, this week's episode and I was just annoyed. Like, annoyed. Watching this. Because I was like, again, another week of Jasmine. I just, I just, Gina doesn't want to be I miss my family. I'm just going to go back to Panama. And she cries to anyone. It doesn't matter if she knows them or not. And I'm just like, I'm tired of it. And you know I'm a sensitive person. I have a cancer, uh, cancer rising. Okay? But watching Jasmine week after week, fake storyline after storyline, because I don't believe the story between her and, and Gino. I know there's a sector of folks, not us. I don't think any of us believes this storyline. If you do, show yourself. But there are a sector of people that are fans of Jasmine and Gino. No, we have a couple of people that are, are fans of Jasmine and Gino. It's so hard for me to watch fake fakery. And I know 90 Day Fiance, I know TLC has a lot of that, but it's become so redundant. I was like, I don't know if I can watch the rest of the season. There isn't a lot of redeemable people to watch during... 90 Day Fiance Happily Ever After. There aren't a lot of redeemable people. So, um, there. I don't care about the storyline. The only redeemable people that I could probably get into this season is Kobe and Emily. Did I still not bring a picture of Kobe and Emily? Damn it. It's all right. It's all right. But it's all right. No word on whether or not we're going to see Michael and Angela this season. I mean, word on the street is that they've been erased from this season, but you never know. Why were they bringing them back anyway? Um, but that's the only story that I'm interested in this week. Of course, they have to drag out their storyline. Does the family accept her? The friends don't like her. Okay, I just want to... Let's get to the wedding, but I get it. It's a reality television show, so we're, they're going to drag this out in regards to coming up with some sort of story. There, there will be some sort of conflict I don't care. Just show me this damn wedding. I'm I'm looking forward to Emily and and Kobe's wedding. That's it. That's it. What what else is different? I don't care. So Rob and Sophie have become annoying too. Rob's so Sophie's best friend, who she used to date when they were teens, 
wasn't that long ago. She's 23, 24 at this time. Um, he comes, Rob, he's like, oh, she never, she never told me that he was a good looking guy. I don't remember what he said. He referred, I was looking at him like, wait a minute, what did you just say? How you doing? <laughs> the way he, and he wasn't even good looking. I mean, I guess maybe to someone, but I would do Rob over, over the other, the, the friend. <laughs> look, 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 I do Rob over the friend. <laughs> I was like, Rob, you think that's good looking? But again, it feels like they need to create some sort of conflict. Well, at least hire someone that's actually hot. Okay. All right. Just hire someone that's actually hot. Then we can at least believe it. We're supposed to believe that he is, Rob is jealous of, of this guy. Please. Please. All right. That's all I have to say. That's all. That's all. I, I, I don't, I can't promise you guys next week if I will even talk about Rob and Sophie or even 90 Day Fiance happily ever after. All right. All right. Guys, if you haven't already, be sure to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, today's live show is sponsored by our friends over at Rose Forever. Spring is here, but Mother's Day is right around the corner. So is my birthday. And so is tourist season. Don't wait. I know a lot of you are like, oh, Mother's Day is so far away. And then it creeps up on you and you're like, damn, well, I need to get my mother something. No. The great thing about getting these flowers from Rose Forever, they last at least a year. So if you buy these roses now, you'll have them for Mother's Day. And they're affordable and we're giving you a discount. Kempire 40 will give you $40 off of anything over at Rose Forever. Plus, Kempire discount code will give you free worldwide shipping. So that's two different discount codes. Kempire 40 for $40 off. Kempire for free worldwide uh, shipping. More details on Rose Forever will be available in the description. And like always, they have roses. They now have hydrangeas and they have candles. So there's a bunch of stuff you can get for mom this year. Just saying. Anyways, guys, be sure to check out the description for more details. And don't forget, you can take the Kempire live show on the go by downloading our podcast, Kempire, on Apple Podcasts and on Spotify. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. All right? All right. <clears throat> okay, let me see what you guys are saying. Oh, wait a minute. Alyssa says, I heard she's back in Panama and has blocked Gina on social. She was just here in New York. She's not back in Panama. <laughs> but you never know. Who knows? I don't know with them and that storyline, but we're going to move on. I'm so mad this week. We don't have traders to talk about. I haven't watched the traders New Zealand yet on Peacock. So that's the only reason why I haven't talked about it. But I did want to mention, I did watch the majority of Quiet On Set, the dark side of kids TV. We did the recap of episodes one through four. But episode five, where they're interviewing some of the folks that spoke during the documentary um, is in episode five. I will say this. I will say this. Um, episode five, eh, eh. It just gives you follow up. So if you want follow up on the different things that you saw in episodes one through four, then it's worth watching. Um, Drake Bell. Drake Bell is interviewed in this as well. And he reveals that because, you know, there were a select few popular known names especially like um, stars from Boy Meets World that came out in defense and wrote letters for um, Dan Schneider, who is the focal point of this documentary. And he says that, you know, they're saying all of this now in regards to him going to that court, you know, sentencing and all these people, n names and their families were there on, uh, on um, I, what was his name? Brian, Brian Beck or something like that on his side, supporting him and writing these letters, yet none of them had reached out to him. He says that he had seen, I forgot the actor's name, one of the other actors that wrote a, you know, character letter for this man. He says that, um, he says that I, I was working with him on Spider-Man and he never mentioned anything then because he, he mentioned in, you know, now, now that this has been revealed that, you know, I, I wish I had, you know, because he, he he made it seem as if his family were the ones to make him do it in, in regards to, you know, supporting the, this man, Brian Peck. Thank you, Brian Peck. Um, and he's like, he never reached out to me. He says no one. Drake Bell says no one reached out to him. 
Now they're probably reaching out to him because he's pointing this out. So were they truly sorry or were they just reacting to what social media was making them react to? My favorite part that I got to see right before our Tuesday Takeover Live was the conversation between, oh my gosh, I'm so mad. I can't remember their names. You guys will remind me. But it was the mother and son that were featured in Quiet on the set. And you remember, he wasn't brought back for another season of all that. And remember, when he wasn't brought back, his relationship with his mom. Where we go? Oh, I thought you guys told me that. His relationship with his mom had been forever changed. Literally up to this um, documentary. It was the documentary that saved their relationship. It was the documentary. She says their relationship had changed since that day when he was told that he was not going to be coming back to Nickelodeon. That the, the, she, the way she described it, the way she described it, I was like, oh, that was powerful. And it hurt her because she knew. She knew in that moment. He literally, he literally knew, he, he didn't know that his mother thought that from that particular situation. In this moment, in this moment, when he saw that in the documentary, that is when he knew uh, why there was this sort of contentious relationship between him and his mom. And I was just like, wow. So all of these years had gone by and they're, they're, they've had this sort of like contentious relationship. And... And this was because of this, this, this television show and what was going on in the cel television show. So not only that, they also um, do interviews with some of the other black stars. And they address what Dan Schneider did on his YouTube channel. Because you know, Dan Schneider got, got a former black actor, that child actor, to interview him to respond to the four-part documentary um, where he is highlighted the most. And he said, you know, I, I, I was one of my very first shows. I highlighted, you know, people of color and things like that. So they address it as well. And, and they, they say it's funny that here's a poignant thing. He said it's funny that he, he talks about this issue of, you know, diversity. And the one thing that he does is overlook two of your black cast members. He mentions Keenan and Kel, but he doesn't mention them. And I was like, damn. That's pretty powerful. But I don't think anyone was fooled by Dan Schneider's YouTube um, 20, less than 20 minute interview. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the cast in episode five were expressing how it, it hit, that interview showed no accountability, no accountability at all. Episode five for me is nice to kind of have this sort of follow up. I knew that this was coming. But if you haven't seen episodes one through four of Quiet on the Set, we did do a recap of this. Be sure to check this out on our YouTube channel. You can also watch it on Facebook, but it might be easier to search here on YouTube. You can also listen to it on our podcast as well. Uh, we talk about it. We even included the callers because a lot of people shared their experiences and thoughts um, based on, on watching the show. One of the things I will say uh, and, and round this conversation out in regards to Quiet on, on, on the Set quite on set, I kind of like, look, I was a kid when all these shows were happening and there was, and I also pointed out to you guys, you also had to have cable. You had to be able to afford cable in order to watch Nickelodeon. So there is a sector of us that just didn't see it. Didn't see us. We didn't see, you know, the foot imagery or the adult imagery that they were trying to do with kids. All right. Even the child actors in episode five are reflecting just like, we didn't find any of these things funny. If anything, Dan Schneider was the, the adult on, on the set laughing the hardest at these jokes because he knew what he was doing. He knew subliminally, subliminally what he was doing. My issue, though, is, and I know hindsight is twenty twenty. However, I'm like, so back in the day, and I know we look back at some of the things that people accepted, but some of the stuff that we see in episodes one through four on Nickelodeon, it's like, we thought this was okay. People on set, parents on set thought this was okay. People watching this thought this was okay. That, that um, fear factor version that they did 
on Nickelodeon, we thought that was okay? Or did we think that it wasn't real? Like, how did we justify this in our heads? How did we justify this in our heads? All right. I just wanted to talk about it because I literally just watched it before our live today. And I'm not going to do a separate live on it because I didn't feel like it was an episode worth doing a separate live. We already did the first four episodes, which is the meat and potatoes of Quiet on Set. So if you missed that, again, you can check that out here on YouTube, Quiet on Set. Our recap is available there. All right. All right. If you're just joining us, guys, don't forget to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting not just my channel, but other channels as well. Yesterday, we were live twice. We had our Real Housewives of Potomac recap with special guest DJ Richie Sky. Be sure to check that out. We had a great time and a great conversation there. We also did our Summer House Martha's Vineyard recap. A lot of you guys are really enjoying this season of Summer House Martha's Vineyard. Be sure to check that out if you missed it. All right? All right. Uh, let me see what you guys are saying in the chat. Um, insert female name, female username says, my parents always said it was weird and we thought they were being religious. Oh, oh, um, let me see. Patrice says, I was shook recalling watching some of it myself. And look, hindsight is 2020, but at the same time, I, I just wonder, you know, I just wonder like what, what were people thinking? Because like I said, I didn't grow up watching Nickelodeon like that. I was familiar with some of the shows like Double Dare, but Double Dare was definitely light in comparison to um, some of the other shows that were highlighted in the Quiet on Set documentary. Evelyn says, I thought I paid close attention to what my kids were watching until I saw this documentary. Damn. You're probably not thinking, you're probably not thinking that Nickelodeon would stand for something like this. But some people are saying Dan Schneider is not the only person that needs to be, you know, needs to be highlighted here. Nickelodeon on some level did turn turn their eye um their eyes away from what was happening on their own network. Okay? Um Maria says, uh, that's why I only watch the tell all now. So sick of the the crying and the yelling. <laughs> well, that might be I'm not going to even watch the tell all if I decide to, you know, stop watching 90 Day Fiance. All right. Let me say thank you, Rahina. Rahina, thank you so much for the super chat, Rahina. I hope you had a fantastic birthday. Rahina says, I can't even watch Nicole's scenes. Clearly, she doesn't respect his religion. Nicole from 90 Day Fiance, happily ever after. His religion, almost as if she is challenging him. But the, th the funny thing is, that's what she did last season, too, when she was in Egypt. So I'm just sort of like... I, this did not fare well for you before, so why are you doing it again here? All right. All right, we're going to move on. We're going to move on from there because I know you guys are here for a lot more. You might be here for a particular story. As always, we will be posting the timestamps after the live show. Shout out to our King's Guards holding us down in the live chat. Mama Ali is keeping score, <laughs> keeping the time in regards to everything. So we will be posting that right after, hopefully right after, because it's up to me to post it. So, you know, I get busy. I'm like, oh, after this, I'm hungry. Anyways, moving on, moving on. Because we have so much to talk about. All right. Let's talk about... Hmm, where do I want to go? Let's go to Gerard Carmichael. All right. So we just talked about Gerard and his... You know, last week we were talking about Gerard Carmichael and his crush on his best friend, Tyler the Creator. I did not expect that we would be talking about Gerard Carmichael again this week. And honestly, this is a cringy story. I'm just going to give you a trigger alert. And when I say trigger alert, I mean trigger alert, okay? So I just want to point this out, okay? So you know Gerard Carmichael has this reality show on, I think it's on Max or something like that. Well, Gerard is being blasted on social media because of some of the things that he says in the latest episode of his, um, of his reality show. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, how you want to describe it, okay? So this is his boyfriend, all right? But as you can see here on the bottom left, this is what some people are saying in regards to um, the latest episode. So for those that aren't don't know and don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to tell you what happened, okay? So our friends over at TMZ write this. They said, comedian Gerard Carmichael's joke about race-based role-playing with his white boyfriend isn't getting as many laughs as it is. As it 
as it is raised eyebrows and anger. The controversial quip came on HBO's Gerard Carmichael reality show, where Gerard says, I sometimes joke to him that our relationship is like that of a slave and a master's son who, like, teaches me how to read by candlelight. Just the opening opening line drew some jeers, but Gerard pressed on. Yeah, he groaned because during the show, it's sort of like you're seeing his real life stuff and then he's he's on stage performing and, and telling stories. He says, yeah, he groans too much because he's a good person and he doesn't like the effing joke. I like that joke. That's my burden. I think I think that um, ish is, is hilarious. So TMZ says, of course, the scene, which debuted on Sunday night, got posted and reposted all over Instagram and ignited a firestorm of criticism as folks blasted Gerard's joke as an inappropriate take on racial inequality. Many commenters accuse uh, Gerard of showing self-hate, while others say, said the, the whole joke was downright cringe. The backlash arguably got worse over on X, as it always does. Look, as it always does. <laughs> where some users dubbed him a danger to the black queer community. <sighs> like, I don't understand why Gerard is sharing so much of, the, like, of his personal thoughts. I'm like, we don't, not everything needs to be said. We don't need to know. We don't need to, I promise you, we don't need to know. But here's what some of the things that people were saying on, on social media. One person says, some black men really have deep-rooted issues. The self-hate is cringe. It's not funny, though, bro. And just like that, he lost me. This is not funny. He, he should have um, kept that to himself. His, his show is hard to watch. I tried and simply couldn't continue it. He, he's so corny, and it's sad. So basically, this is race play that he's playing with with his um, boyfriend that's white. Gerard, like, what what is going on with Gerard? Like, he had such a promising career. Like, he came out the gate. I remember when he got his um, his uh, sitcom, same place where we were introduced to Tiffany Haddish. Well, some of us, some of you probably didn't even know Tiffany Haddish until Girls Trip. I got familiar with Tiffany on that show. That was the first place that I saw her. And it was such a good show. I love the show. I, I, some people don't need to do reality television. Some people don't need to do reality television. And the last thing I need... And, and mind you, here's the thing. He, I think that there's... If he's telling us this, <laughs> can you imagine what he's not telling us in regards to his race play? I don't want to know. I don't play those games. Because I, I might have a reaction. My, my one good arm might go. <laughs> because then, because then uh, what, what if this, this person that's white thinks that, oh, I thought we were playing. Then they say something else. They get, they get full on into character. We might. I don't know what I would do if someone that I call a, a partner was to take, take this race play to a whole other. No, no. No. Mm -mm 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 -mm. <sighs> oh, oh, wait, hold on. Wow, Jasmine says, extremely weird. I didn't even know who he was before the Tyler Creator stuff. Yeah, I feel like he, I don't even know. It, it, he sort of came out of nowhere for me. I know some, people, some of you may have been familiar with his stand-up comedy, but when he got his own show on NBC, I was like, who's this guy that they're giving, giving his own show to? But I enjoyed the show. We had Loretta Devine was in it as well. Who else was in it? Oh my gosh. I can't think of everyone. I can't think of everyone's name, but there were a lot of notable people in it and it was really funny. I think it only had one season or two at the most. I don't remember. Yeah, the Carmichael show. It was good. It was good. This though? No. No. <clears throat> Jazeline says you can't do everything. You think he's doing it for a bag? I don't know. With all this Diddy stuff, it's got me looking at Holly weird like, are you doing this because you're told to do this in order to get something else? Just saying. David Allen Greer. Thank you, Jasmine. David Allen, uh, Allen Greer was in it. You know, from In Living Color and, and many other. He was hilarious in it. 
Like, I want to go watch it again, but now I don't want to watch it. Uh, right. JP, JP says, HBO canceling all those other black shows for this is very telling. They saw this and they said, yes, let's go with this. Okay. All right. Oh, okay. I did hear, I did not see this. Hold on. Um, uh, Sayla says that his comedy special, uh, R Rowenthal, um, Rothaniel, Rothan right? I can't even pronounce things. It was really good. I heard that too. That's where he came out. That's where, that's where he initially came out as gay and being part of the LGBT community. Right. And Laurel was in it. I forgot Laurel was in it too. Laurel was, um, were they married? I think they were married. Tiffany Haddish and Laurel in it. They were either, they were either married or to get, or just like boyfriend and girl. And they were boyfriend and girlfriend in the Carmichael show. Like so much talent was in that show, but it didn't get a chance. And now it's, now he's doing, <laughs> look, now he's doing this on HBO Max. Well, Max is no longer HBO. All right. Angela says he's another gay black man allowing himself to be used by the industry just like they're doing with Lil Nas X. Some people have said that. You believe that they're doing that with Lil Nas X? Now, I don't know. Now that you said it, now I'm looking at everybody with the side eye like, why, like, why do we know this? But okay. As always, guys, feel free to share your thoughts on the Jared, uh, Ger Jared, <laughs> Gerard Carmichael um, latest episode. I mean, look, we're promoting the show. Now people might go and watch it. I'm not. I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. Whatever. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. All right. Um, okay. Speaking of cringe. All right. I did a separate story over the weekend about Aoki Lee Simmons and her older boyfriend, <sighs> look, <laughs> where's my Aoki? And okay, trigger alert, trigger alert, calm down. All right, people, prepare yourself. This is Aoki in St. Bart with her uh, Serafina co owner, co founder, very rich, <laughs> look, very rich, 65 year old boyfriend, Vittorio Asaf. Well, breaking news, but what we've heard is that they have now broken up. I, ew, mm, uh, okay, so for, if you missed the video that we did, we, we showed you a couple of different videos and I was like, I don't see this last thing. I don't know what this is. A lot of you have said she learned it from her mama. She learned it from her father. Her father recently came out, Russell Simmons, for those that don't know, Russell Simmons came out and said this in regards to um, his thoughts on her dating, dating the 65-year-old man. All right. So let me just pull this up if I can. There, there we go. So according to our friends over at E! Online, they write this in regards to what Russell Simmons had to say about his 60, uh, uh, his 21 year old daughter dating a 65 year old man. So they said this Russell Simmons will always have love for his daughter. The music producer shared his thoughts on daughter Aoki Lee Simmons, new romance with Vittorio Asaf, who is 44 years her senior. He says, I'm not going to kick and scream about her choices. As you know, he shares, um, Aoki with Kimora Lee Simmons. This is what, what Russell told Team Z on April 1st. Maybe it was an April Fool's joke. He says, all I can do is offer my advice and unconditional love. All right. So he, she did warn, she did warn him. She did warn her father when she said this. You don't raise my budget. I'm going to your sugar daddy. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. I'm kidding. What did you say? Nothing. Okay. You don't even have, don't even have sugar daddy capabilities, right? Aren't you a B? <laughs> Of course you are, right? I'm just saying, if you don't give me money, I'm gonna go. I don't know. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna sell arms. I'm gonna sell. Butt. Um, I don't think she was joking because if you watch some of the footage that we posted in the previous video covering this story, they're driving through St. Bart's, and she's like, "I like Bulgari. I like Cartier. 
Like she, she's actually kind of look. I, we know we loved us some Aoki when she graduated from Harvard. It's like good for her, despite all the stuff that you know Holly Weird can do to children. She, she came out on top, got her education. I expected she also models, but I expected her to go on and do something with that degree. I did not expect this. Okay, first of all, I'm just gonna play a little bit, a little bit of Aoki in the car. She never shows her boyfriend, but we hear him. Okay. But I'm just going to show you a little bit at the top when she asked him to go get some crepes. And I'm like, this is where you're reminded she's only 21. She might be 10 based off this reaction. Let me play this for you guys. Hold on. There we go. Today in St. Bart's. Um, I'm so sad, but I'm very sad, very happy. And when I return home, um... Everybody who knows me will be getting a happier, more chilled out version of me. My boyfriend is checking in. I don't know why we're checking in in events like this. Probably because I have a missed flight. I should just show. She wants to cry. Pray? Oh, I thought you were saying no. No, I can't. I can't keep it because I don't have any new cards. I'm making my final safe cards video. Aww. Aww. Would you like to share your favorite thing about the trip anonymously? <laughs> you. You said me. Do you, do you. you want me to open the drink? Baby, you are on shush. Shush. I'm making this video. So I'm confused. You guys let me know what you think. When he says that Mary J. Blige, Mary J. Blige wanted to be his partner, I associated it with the drink. Did he mean that Mary J. Blige was trying to get her sugar daddy? But at least they'll be, they would be a little bit more age appropriate than a just 21 year old. Look, when he told her. Well, he didn't say no, but when she thought he said no to her getting a crepe, she went from 21 to six and we knew her at six. And when I say we knew her, she was on reality television. So I'm thinking, I mean, first of all, she still sounds like, <laughs> like Aoki from back then, to be honest with you. I don't know, y'all. <laughs> I don't know. But word on the street, according to page six, Ayoki and her love affair with Vittorio Asaf, 65-year-old, 44-year age difference, is over. <laughs> who do you think broke up with who? Do you think that uh, Vittorio was getting a lot of backlash, maybe from his business partners? Or maybe Mary J. Blige called him up? I wish you would. <laughs> do you think... I wonder what happened. <sighs> Okay. <laughs> Duran, Duran says, I'm broke. I guess because what's a crepe? Oh, girl. Google's, and it's not even spelled like that. <laughs> Duran. It's sort of like, it's sort of like a pancake, but it's French. It's a lot thinner than a pancake. I personally, I like a pancake over a crepe. But some people love them a crepe because you can, you can do all kinds of things with crepes. You, they put all kinds of fruits and syrups and things like that on it. Why are we talking about food? Mmm. <laughs> Riz says, I'd rather be broke. <laughs> Duran, I agree. Duran says he probably got he probably got tired of her. She seems annoying. Okay, I don't know the timeline of Aoki and and Vittorio's relationship. Some people say that they were dating for a little bit, and some people say they, they met in St. Bart. It's hard to, to know when these two met, but if they met in St. Bart and it's over already. <laughs> I'm not surprised, like just watching the footage, because I, you know, I do my, I do my due diligence, I do my homework. <laughs> so, watching multiple videos of her talking about social media, talking about this relationship, talking about Saint Bart, I was just like, she's annoying. <laughs> Look, she's annoying. All right, all right, but I wanted to give you guys an update because word on the street, Ayoki and Vittorio are done. <sighs> Let's move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Speaking of, of, of the slammer, Jonathan Majors. 
Let me play my clip. You know I love to play this clip. How are you guys doing? You doing okay? In love. <laughs> yeah, we're doing oh, that was my answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're doing good. We're doing good. Thanks for asking. Yeah. 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 Thanks. So much. Wicked. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> well, well, Jonathan Majors actually has some luck this week. He actually has some luck, luck this week because he's not going to serve jail time. Let me get into this article. Where is my article? Hold on, y'all. Let me put... Oh, here it is. There we go. So Ger Gerard Carmichael was sentenced to one year of domestic violence counseling. All right. So our friends over at ya uh, Yahoo write this in regards to Jonathan Majors. Let me just bring up the... Um, court um appearance that he had hold on that's not it this one because you you had to know that his 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 um girlfriend for hire aka megan good was there by his side during the sentencing so yahoo writes this jonathan majors has been sentenced to probation in his domestic violence case the 34 year old actor who was convicted of uh, assaulting his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari, who is now suing him in a civil suit um, for DV. Um, oh, wait, no, he was given one year of domestic violence counseling. Majors, whose career, as you know, was derailed by allegations, had faced up to one year in jail. Okay? One year in jail he was facing. So he's not going to get any prison time. So... Yahoo writes this. It said, on Monday, Majors, who has maintained his innocence, appeared in Manhattan criminal court for sentencing on two counts, reckless assault in the third degree, a misdemeanor, and harassment in the second degree, a violation. He arrived wearing a blue and white coat and sunglasses. Let me tell y'all, this jacket, I need to get this jacket because I don't like, I don't, I normally don't like um, Jonathan Majors' fashion, but, oh, I don't have it. I don't have the picture here. Oh, let me bring this picture over y'all because y'all have to see this jacket because uh, shout out to our friends over at um, at Fashion Bomb Daily because they highlighted this jacket. And I said, oh, that's a nice jacket. I was like, that's a nice jacket. Come on now. <laughs> Look at this jacket, y'all. For those that are listening to this on the podcast, just head on over to our YouTube channel so you can see the jacket. But I'll describe it. It's like it has these incredible patterns to it. It's like blue and cream. Megan Good is looking like the Coretta Scott King that he wants so badly. Okay, but do you guys think, <laughs> do you guys think that now that he's not going to serve any prison time, do you think now all those things will start to come back to him in regards to, remember, his, man his management dropped him, his publicity dropped him. Do you, remember, Disney dropped him, Marvel dropped him. Do you think now that they will, oh, well, you know, unfortunately for black folks, it's never like that, unfortunately. But we'll just have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay? Um, so they said an emotional Jabari delivered a victim in impact statement telling the court he is not so sorry. He has not accepted responsibility. He will do this again. He will hurt other women. This is a man who believes he is above the law. So Majors de declined to make a statement at sentencing. Uh, a, um, the assistant district attorney, Kelly Galloway, uh, asked Judge um, Michael Gaffey to sentence Majors to 52 weeks of an in-person domestic violence program or 26 weeks of jail time. She said that instead of showing contrition after his arrest, he was behind a high-powered PR campaign against the victim. We talked about that. And it was, it, honestly, it wasn't very high powered. To me, it gave very low budget. Oh, he needed to hire someone else to handle this PR situation. And honestly, this for me, the fact that DA is saying this says to me this relationship with Megan Good is also part of that campaign. Megan, get your money, girl. I get, look, times are hard. You heard what Taraji said for black actresses in Hollywood. So if this is going to pay, look, damn, uh, why? Uh, anyways, I wonder, I wonder how much he got paid for this, allegedly. <laughs> so, um, so Gaffey said he didn't believe jail was necessary. Instead, sentencing majors to one year in a battery program, which is better as a better look. And this is why I believe opportunities will open up for Jonathan Majors because he's not going to jail. The, the look of a possible Disney star or a Marvel star going to jail is not good. 
So now that he's not going to jail and he's just doing this sort of like, you know, you know, in-person uh, counseling, it's different. But do you believe the allegations? As you know, there were other allegations from other people against um, against Jonathan Majors as well. All right. So while Majors' attorney asked the actor to be able to do the program remotely, uh uh-uh, really? But I guess I guess you have to try in life. You, you you never you never know. A judge might say yes. So while Majors' attorney asked the actor uh, be able to do the program remotely so he could work, the judge says it would be in person. The nerve. You know, they had the nerve. Majors also must continue therapy. I mean, yes. The judge also awarded Jabari a protection order that Major has to pay $250 for. <sighs> Lord. So as you know, he has faced a lot of career fallout. Yahoo reminds us that there has been a significant fallout for Majors. Almost immediately after his arrest, his agent and publicist dropped him. He was cut from multiple projects and lost brand deals. This part we reported on as well. A Rolling Stone expose followed uh, alleging alleging a pattern of extreme abuse dating back nearly a decade with claims that Majors was physically and or emotionally abusive with two other past romantic partners. Majors denies these allegations as well. Majors was also featured in season two of Loki in 2023 after the guilty verdict, Disney fired him, cutting him from the role of Kang the Conqueror in the upcoming film, Avengers, the Kang Dynasty and Avengers Secret Mars. I don't see them coming back after you fired someone, but Majors broke his silence, as you know, about the abuse allegations in an interview with ABC News in January, saying I was reckless with her heart, not with her body. My hands have never struck a woman ever. As you also know, and I just mentioned this before, Jabari sued um, uh, Jonathan Majors for defamation over the interview. So in a statement prior to sentencing, Majors attorney said the actor continues to draw strength from his friends, fans, family and dogs. He looks forward to closing this chapter and redirecting his time and energy fully towards his family and his art. Majors did not comment as he left the court. Well, look, he's gotten he's gotten some grace. I hope he does something with it. Because if there's any truth to some of the allegations, therapy will help. I'm not concerned for Megan Good because, again, I don't believe this is a real relationship. I don't believe she's sleeping at his house. So I'm not I'm not too worried for Megan's safety. But girl, I hope that check was good. Ooh, Gene, this is this is a bar. Gene says Disney will fire Jonathan Majors, but hire Brian Peck. Interesting. Brian Peck from the Quiet On Set documentary, who was convicted. He was a convicted eh, offender. He was working with Nickelodeon, served his time, and then ended up getting hired for Disney. I'm just waiting on the Disney documentary. Okay. But that that is a bar, Gene. Thank you so much for that. Good point. Points have been made. Guys, you're just joining us. This is our Tuesday takeover. As always, don't forget to like the video. It's an easy and free way of supporting the channel. But if you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts or on Spotify, don't forget to give us a five-star rating. Let me take a drink from my coldest water bottle. And if you are wondering, do you still have that discount code Kempire for coldest? Yes, I do. Kempire 10 for 10% off at coldest.com. They have water bottles, sheets, pillows, things for your pets. Head on over to, well, it's not in the description, but head on over to coldest.com. Discount code Kempire 10. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love when Deron <laughs> Deron says Meg. Everyone keeps saying this. Megan left the pastor for him. No, Megan left the pastor for some old, uh, so, some whole other reason. Got caught up in this situation. I don't know why, but here we are. <sighs> but the pastor, the, look, the pastor has moved on. Deron Franklin has moved on. He was seen holding hands with someone new recently. All right. Let's get back into a little reality television. No promises that I will be recapping the latest episode of Vanderpump Rules, but I did want to talk about something that Andy Cohen had mentioned on on, on his radio, Andy. So take a listen to what Andy um, had to say about Vanderpump Rules. Now, it is Vanderpump Rules night. And I got to tell you, I said something very offhandedly on this broadcast about three weeks ago that... 
has just been clogging up my Twitter timeline ever since, and not in a positive way. <laughs> and that is that I, I believe that I, again, kind of offhandedly said that Lala and Brock are the voices of reason this season. Well, people are doubting my sanity. They <laughs> think I am apt. And they also just think I'm a horrible person for saying so. Let me just say, again, I'm enjoying Lala and Brock this season. That's all. Voices of Reason is, I guess y'all got me there because, you know, it's a show in which there is maybe not a ton of reason. And maybe that's why we like it. But again, I, I just will say, I'll just say it in a different way. I'm really enjoying La La and Brock this season. I really am. I am too. And, and I also think the real voice of reason, the question would be, do you think that Brock could crack my skull between his eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Brock's, I know that hair. I would that, like to challenge that him haircut, to you know, crush my skull using just your thighs. There are two things that, um, there are two things that I think are uh, that are connective tissues for me with Lala this season. The first is that I'm I remain very impressed by her sobriety and her mm -hmm. commitment to it, and I think it's. Um, I think it's admirable. I think it's admirable in life, and I also am always impressed when people choose sobriety and continue to take part in a reality show, uh, yeah. which I think is probably can be triggering in all sorts of ways. And so I always am really impressed when someone on one of our shows. Uh, get sober and remain sober. I think it's so great. And then the second thing that I connect with Lala about is her journey as a single mom, because I do call her a single mom because I don't yeah. have a sense of what her ex is doing. But also she is now um, on this season of Vanderpump Rules. She is finding a sperm donor and she's going to do this for herself. And as you see now, she is pregnant. So I always respect a person who decides for themselves, I want kids and makes it happen because it's hard to do. And it's obviously it's what I did. And so I, I feel a connection to that person. So I think those are two other reasons why I'm feeling la la this season in um, mm -mm. so here's the thing i'm gonna defend andy <laughs> just a little bit because we talked about this if you've seen any of our vanderpump rules recaps or coverage of scandal i told you about this mob mentality i don't disagree with andy that lala and brock have been the voices of reason and when i say they're the voices of reason meaning that they're not following the crowd see mariana look i feel for ariana what tom sandoval did was wrong are they trying to make Tom Sandoval into, you know, this is sort of his um, redemption season? Maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe a little too soon because we this just happened. And he he himself doesn't show any sort of remorse. He really has not shown any remorse. If Raquel was there this season, he would be all up on Raquel and doing doing all of that. But Raquel says, I'm out. I'm not doing this. Lala and Brock, although I don't always agree with them, they're the only ones saying what some of the audience is saying about this situation. And saying like, well, we are filming a show. We get it. What he did was wrong. However, you can't demand that all of us just cut this person out of our lives. Because first of all, you're filming a show. But also, this person has been a part of our lives. We don't like what he did to you. But that doesn't mean that we have to completely erase this person from our lives. But like I said, I feel like they're the only one. And honestly, without people having a contrary position, a reality show is not going to be entertaining. And sidebar, it still hasn't been entertaining, despite 
um, the contrary uh, opinions of Lala and Brock. But here, look, here we are. All right. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, is uh, Semhar asked the question? Is is Harlem coming back? Harlem on Prime? Yes, they. F I think they're actually done filming their season, and Robin Givens is going to be a part of season three of Harlem on Prime. Julie, thank you so much for another super chat. Julie says, "Your thoughts on the big producer on Ultimate Girl Show coming coming out to say that Caroline is lying about Brandy? OMG, Traders UK finale, incredible. I didn't see that, so I really can't weigh in on that, but." Um, that's one person's opinion again in regards to this. Look, I, I, they have a lawsuit. We'll see how this lawsuit plays out, if it plays out at all. If they will settle it, we shall see. Um, Rahina, thank you so much for the super chat. Rahina says that had um I had a great B day, Kempire. Thank you. I went to uh, what's it? Crown Crown She Delicious. What's Crown She? What's that? Let me know what that is. You don't have to send a super chat to let me know, though. <laughs> Just let me know what that is. Uh, Ali, thank you so much for this super chat. Ali says, after I saw her live, I said the old man will be breaking up with her by Tuesday. And here we are. <laughs> they are trying to spin this like she broke it off. That man didn't know that they were they were live. Oh, he thought it was just video footage. Oh. I mean, what a shock us. You know, if you're a particular age, you don't know all the stuff like the Internet was invented when I was what? How old were we? Like when I was a kid, the Internet was invented. <laughs> so it's fairly new for me. So for him. It's <laughs> very new. OK. <sighs> oh, damn. I, I am not highlighting some of your comments. You guys are a mess. Uh, Papa Leo Girl says La, uh, Brock and Lala are right. Ariana is getting bags of money outside of EPR. They need to work with Tom. So, look, I'm not saying that Ariana's wrong. What I am saying, this whole mentality that people can't have uh, an opinion outside of uh, Ariana's is ridiculous, especially above the age of two. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that that's just the way that I feel. I don't believe what Tom Sandoval did was right. How with that being said, if you're filming a show, you have to work with him. It's going to be impossible. If we if we allowed Ariana to dictate this show, we would have a boring show. But still, we already have a boring show and that might be because people are refusing to film with each other. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe they just are boring at this point. A lot of you were done with Vanderpump until Scandal hit. <sighs> okay. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. We have almost 1,800 of you watching on multiple... No, more than 1,800. Almost 1,900 of... Actually, almost 2,000 of you watching on multiple platforms. Thank you guys so much for being here. Shout out to everyone watching on TikTok. Shout out to everyone watching on Twitch and Twitter. And of course, on Facebook and on the Kempire YouTube channel for our Tuesday Takeover. This is a special time. We're normally live a little bit earlier. But I'm not done. We still have a lot more to talk about in regards to some pop culture news. So I'm going to move on from that story and talk about Rihanna. Can we talk? So Rihanna broke the internet today because Rihanna decided to release uh, this cover. Okay, this is a cover art from her interview magazine. And she had a lot to say. And if you had any hopes of Rihanna releasing new music, <laughs> we will get to it. We will get to it. Rihanna is not releasing any new music. So y'all need to let that go. Oh my goodness. Let's, let's, let, me, let me unpack uh, some of what Rihanna said in this interview. Where is my other things? Hold on, y'all. I want to bring up what Rihanna says in this interview hold on so there are a couple things as you know rihanna is a big fan of the housewives right so she talks a little bit about monica reality von Teese, darnell delgado garcia fowler jesse smollett you remember from real housewives of salt lake city gave us an iconic season yes so Rihanna, in this interview, talks a little bit of housewives because she does love housewives and she talks about kyle Scissoring, we're gonna be scissoring. <laughs> All right. So, um, in the interview, uh, the interviewer asks, 
Um, I can cut a line. Wait, should Monica Garcia come back? Brianna responds. She's like, I mean, if Tom Sandoval can come back, Monica should definitely be able to come back. I was like, not, not Rihanna with a hot take. <laughs> Do you agree with Rihanna? Do you think it, it's similar? Do you think it's similar in, in, in reference? The interview, interviewer then asked, do you think that Kyle Richards and Morgan Wade were a couple? Rihanna says, I mean, duh, and laughs. Listen, I love Kyle. It's weird commenting on her relationship because I don't know the facts. I just feel like she was able to reobserve her marriage through a new lens. For once, someone else made her feel valued, made her feel, excuse me, made her feel like she was cute. Hold on. Wait, Rihanna, that was a little shady. <laughs> made her feel like she was cute and quirky and fun and all the great things that maybe were taken for granted before. Is she, I don't think she intentionally meant to say it, say it like that, but that's a little shady. Rihanna. <laughs> I need to read it again. For once, someone else made Kyle feel valued, made her feel like she was cute and quirky and fun and all the great things that maybe were taken for granted before. And that's why I believe there's something with Morgan, because sometimes it takes that for you to fight for what you deserve. <laughs> Ooh, <ciao. laughs> so Rihanna, uh, she, OK, you can weigh in and, and share your thoughts on what Rihanna's saying. I don't know if I believe that this situation with Kyle is real. Do I believe that maybe Kyle was playing in the, the lady pond for a short minute? Maybe. Do I believe that she's playing there long term and in, in the future? No. And that's why I told Morgan, you know, careful. She might be singing Scissorine now, but you won't get your heart broke. I know you've been through that before when it comes to a straight woman. Come on now. <laughs> look, look, come on now. There's always that story. Shout out to the lesbians. There's always that story of that one straight woman. Just saying. But I know what you want to hear. Brianna talks about her relationship with uh, ASAP Rocky in this new interview interview <laughs> for Interview Magazine. Uh, first of all, these photos are so freaking scary. I, I look, I can't. Where are the photos? Hold on, y'all. Um, why can't I see anything? Oh, here it is. Okay. So, so these photos are so strange but rihanna is so beautiful so i think she takes any opportunity where she doesn't look good <laughs> but even even here she still looks good in a creepy kind of way okay but she talks about asap rocky and how fashion forward he is and how she feels bummy next to him so the interview she says this she says in regards to these earrings that she was wearing she says it's a little gift from rocky so the interviewer says, oh, he has such good taste. Rihanna says, isn't he the best? I be feeling bummy um, as ish next to this man. I feel like, God damn, I look like his assistant. <laughs> I'm getting on a plane. We should be in sweats. He wants to put on a full Bottega suit. I'm like, why you got to do that to me? These two are like best friends as well. I like this relationship for Rihanna, although he's in some, some, some trouble right now. But... She's known him a long time. And she has said that this man is her best friend. They share two children together. Two children together. Um, so the interviewer says, so is there a little competition for looks? Rihanna says, no, it's more like I spend my time getting the kids dressed to death. And then I'm like, what's the most comfortable outfit to wear around them? What's not going to feel uncomfortable on their face or on their body or make me feel like I can't hold them properly? Moms are lazy dressers in real life. And this is a billionaires. <laughs> this is a billionaires who can have an assistant do all of this, a nanny do all of this, but she's doing this herself. So the interviewer asks, right, do you have racks of children's clothes? She says, I have racks, I have bags. They're all sized and organized. And then whatever gets too small for Riza, I put into bins for, for the, uh, so that Riot can have them next. Riot is actually in all of Riza's one-year-old clothes already. He's only six months. Everybody thinks Rocky dresses them because I dress them in Rocky's outfits. Um, we do also find out that Riza, her, her, her firstborn's first word, she said, so the interviewer says, what was Riza's first word? And she says, hey, 
when I heard this, it, that, that if you listened to Wendy on the radio years ago, you know what voice I was just making. Hey, <laughs> just say. Anyways, all right. Um, what else did I want to talk about from this interview? There was another. I have one more thing we talk before we talk about the music. There was something else that she said in this interview that I wanted to highlight. Was there anything else? Um, let me see. Bum, 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 bum. No, okay. There's a lot that that's there's a lot being said. Um, okay. Let let's let me move on to this this particular point. So a lot of people, anytime there's an interview with Rihanna, anytime Rihanna's name is, that comes up, they think Rihanna is coming out with new music every time. Every time people have been waiting on a Rihanna album for years. I must remind you when Rihanna was hot. I mean, she's still hot, but you get what I'm saying. When she was releasing music, she was releasing music year after year after year, like clockwork. So I was okay with Rihanna taking a break from music. But now even I'm sort of like, Rihanna, girl, like wh what's going on with the music? Where, where is the music, Riri? Okay, so the interviewer asked Rihanna, right, so we're in a rehearsal space, which is I've been interviewing you for a while and we haven't talked about music. Do you have the vibe to do music again since we're at an effing rehearsal hall in 2024? Maybe it's really sick if I just don't bring up new music in this whole interview, actually. Rihanna responds and says, I have a lot of visual ideas. It's weird. My brain is working backward right now. I usually have the music first and the music leads me into all of these visual opportunities. And now I'm having all of these visuals and I don't have the songs for them yet. I, look, when I read this sentence initially, I was like, wait, so the album isn't ready. Doesn't mean that she hasn't recorded a bunch of songs, but it sounds as if any of those songs that she recorded, she's like, they don't fit what I'm envisioning for the visual. So now we have to wait on her to create the music? Oh, damn. <laughs> we gotta wait on her. <laughs> Ray, Ray. Riri, come on now. What are we doing here? So she says, I have a lot of visual ideas. It's weird. My brain is working backwards right now. I usually have the music first and, and the music leads me into all of these visual opportunities. And now I'm having all of these visuals and I don't have the songs for them yet. But maybe that's the key this time. Maybe the visual ideas are leading me to the songs that I need to make. <laughs> oh, Riri. <laughs> She said, the music ain't coming. The music ain't coming. SW says a movie might be coming. Look, Rihanna's given us so much. She has a catalog that we could play over and over again. I just feel now she might be getting into that Cardi B thing. She hasn't said this, but because she hasn't put out music in so long, there is a lot of pressure for this next project to be a hit. There's a lot of pressure. So I wonder if she's feeling that pressure and that's part of the reason why she keeps pushing it off. Yes, she's given birth in the last couple of years, but even before that. All right. <laughs> SW says maybe the, this eclipse will help Riri's alignment. All right. Semhar says, if she's not going to make music, can she make the kids' clothes I would buy? <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised. You know, she was she's in fashion. Sidebar, do, have you guys tried the Savage Fenty underwear men? Uh, women, I'm sure you have. But the men's, the men's underwear, are they good? Because I'm thinking, like, I'm trying to find some new underwear. <laughs> I'm trying to find some new underwear. Uh, Nola reminds us this. Fashion made Riri a billionaire after seven albums in seven years, then a few more. It's no longer priority um, nor passion like before. Riri is busy and her time is precious. Uh, get it, Riri, do you? Sidebar, congratulations to Taylor Swift. They announced that she's officially Forbes and now she's officially a billionaire and she's the first person to ever do it solely from music. All right. Congratulations to Taylor Swift. Congratulations to Rihanna, Robin Rihanna Fenty. Okay. And her family. She seems happy. I'm not going to be mad at Rihanna for being happy and doing what she, what she wants. I'm going to go listen to the, to the previous albums. We have plenty of albums to listen to. When you're when she's ready, we'll be ready. 
Will we? Look, will we? <laughs> we will. We will get ready. Okay? Homegirl says she <laughs> she she has all the visuals, but no music. <laughs> Rosanna says the skincare line is everything. I got me some um fancy beauty. I definitely got me some fancy beauty. Anyways, all right. I still have so much to talk about for our Tuesday takeover. So let's get on because I do want to talk about... Which story did I want to talk about? Oh, I, I don't want to talk about this story as, as much as I just want to show you a photo. We, I don't... I, there's nothing that I need to say about this particular story, even though what he's talking about is so important. Okay, what he's talking about is so important, but people are so distracted. So, you know, Ter Terrence Howard from multiple movies, Empire, as you know, he has been battling Hollywood saying that he wants his fair share. Okay, so he did an interview dressed like this, y'all. And for those that are listening to this, uh, Jive Turkey, um, what, Terrence, why did you do this interview with this hair. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought this was a joke. I thought this was a joke, but our friends over at Bro Bible wrote this. They said, actor Terrence Howard, an NAACP Image Award um, uh, winner, was the star of Empire, as you know, on Fox until the show came to an end in 2020. After 102 episodes, he recently spoke about his choice to leave CAA, Creative Artist Agency, over a dispute related to earnings. Most people um, don't realize what he, what he was saying because Howard used the interview to debut a new look. Silky hair similar to what the Bee Gees band uh, members used to rock. The show, according to Howard, had 28 million viewers per episode. Wow. He told, he told this to Daphne Wynn in an interview where he also discusses how CAA agents represented cast members of Big Bang Theory, where those cast members were getting paid two to three million per episode. Not per episode. <laughs> While he was only earning 300K per episode. Were, was Empire really bringing in 28 million viewers per episode? If that's true, they, they need to run him a check. Jive Turkey. <laughs> look, Jive Turkey. Look, run him a check. Why, Terrence, with this hair? <laughs> oh, I, good. I, I thought this too, Miranda. Miranda says, but yeah, he's probably filming something. I mean, it looks, is it a wig? Because if it's a wig, he could have taken it off. But I look, we all need a palate cleanser in the middle of such serious topics. But damn, really, Terrence? You're never gonna live this down. No, this look is going to be a look that they use all the time. But what he's talking about is very important, and especially when it comes to black folks in Hollywood. We were just talking about this when we were talking about Megan Good. And why she decided to... Okay. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Dia, you're right. This look was definitely super pop. D Dia, you are right. Dia reminds us that th at, at the time, back in 1972, this look was super popular. Very popular. You're right. And you know how they... We love to relive some of these looks. All right. Look, I, I know... Look. <laughs> Sometimes in the streets, you see some people still rocking these looks. And some people really pull it off. Do you guys think that Terrence Howard is pulling it off? Do you think he's pulling it off? Clearly, he was going for a look. Look at the collar. His collar is giving 70s, too. I hope it was for a movie. All right? Okay. All right. Shout out to Terrence Howard, though. Okay? All right. All right. The City Girls. Okay, I'm just going to briefly talk about this because I, there has been some female hip-hop beef in the last week. And we see beef in hip-hop all the time, but I have to say these new these newbies, th these beefs don't hit the same. <laughs> am I, am I, or am I, am I old fogey? Am I old fogey? These rap beefs don't hit the same. I, I really just don't care. And I really don't believe this beef between Young Miami and her partner, JT, her 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 band partner of the, of the City Girls. 
So as you can see here, these were their tweets that they were going back and forth on on social media. I'm not going to even read them because fast forward. OK, let me let me show you the other stuff. OK, some more tweets between JT and Young Miami. So they were going back and forth on social media. Y'all have each other's number. <laughs> Y'all are in a band together. <laughs> you know, Mama Ellie says, would I wear this wig for? No, <laughs> I need to get one of those, you know, <laughs> they still wear them in uh, Parliament in, in the UK. I should get one of those. <laughs> no, back to this. So JT and and uh, Young Miami were going back and forth. J JT was already having beef with Go uh, Glorilla. Sidebar, I saw a re uh, some clips of Glorilla's Club Shay Shay interview. I think I kind of like her. She's kind of funny. <laughs> Look, she's kind of funny. But anyways. So when I was seeing this beef between JT and um, Young Miami, I was like, this ain't real. Is this, is this your way, ladies, of getting more interest for that album that flopped it flopped it flopped you guys said if you didn't want to listen to it a lot of you said the city girls have had their time a lot of you wanted jt to go solo jt has gone solo at least for now she's doing a solo tour she's releasing solo music y'all still dragging young miami i'm not sure why y'all don't like young miami i don't know enough about her all right so Young, young Miami is tied up with the whole Diddy situation. Y'all still, I don't know what you want Young Miami to say. I don't know what you want her to say. Especially when you know what Diddy allegedly is capable of. I just want her to be safe and her kids. Just saying. But I didn't believe this beef between JT and Young Miami. And of course, poor Saucy, poor Saucy Santana, who you know is BFFs with Young Miami, jumped in it. Now everybody's all good. They all they all love each other. Why couldn't this been done on so why was this done on social media? How old is everyone involved? Can someone tell me? Because that would probably explain a lot more. But they all look grown. I can understand possible beef with Glorilla or some of the, the other rap um ladies. However, your business partner, because they, they're in business together. They're in a, a, a rap group together. You couldn't pick up the phone. Apparently, they did pick up the phone and they had a conversation as well. Honestly, I'm only talking about it because it's on my list. <laughs> Look, it was on my list. I'm happy that they've made peace. They've made peace. Excuse me. They've made peace. They're all good. Young Mi All good in the hood with JT and Young Miami and the, the flop album. It did flop. They're in their 30s? Come on. I was like, <laughs> if you told me they were like 25, I would have been like, okay. <laughs> look, okay. Well, no, look, look, look. Danny, I don't think anyone's going to come at you. Danny says JT's the better rapper. I see that all over the internet. People have been waiting for JT to go solo. But look, Young Miami has a lot more going for, not a lot more going for. She has a lot of other things going for her as well outside of, of rap. You remember she had got Carisha Please, she got that podcast and things like that. She isn't she doing some acting as well? So look. Look. All right. Lord. All right, let me move on. Cause I have more to talk about. Cause we got we gotta get into this JLo story. <laughs> JLo! Girl. This eclipse was kicking yo ass, J Lo. First of all, as you know, J Lo released uh, a new album. She also released a documentary. She also released um, that musical thing to go along with the album. But since she's done this documentary, people are coming out of the woodwork, accusing... Look, we've heard stories about J-Lo over the years being a diva, uh, not singing all of her songs. Well, there, there was one story that I didn't know about until now. So I want to share it here because I did talk about it on TikTok, right? TikTok, we talked about this already. But I wanted to share with our community because I know you guys don't follow me everywhere, but you should. So you're missing out. <laughs> Look, you're missing out. I don't remember to, to, to post everything everywhere. All right. All right. So let me just play this clip from Natasha Ramos who posted this. And look, Natasha has told this story before. So apparently Natasha Ramos says that she is the voice, the voice of Jenny on the Block, the song. And she did some more work on that same project. 
She also accused Corey Rooney, who is a producer and collaborator, consistent collaborator with J-Lo over the years. She accused him of saying, you know, give me a kiss and then give me a kiss with tongue. And then she refused. And he was just basically like, your career is going to be over. She says that she was only paid $3,500 for that, for the work that she did on that project. And she says she accuses them of her, her then manager signing off on something that she never signed off on. And they were like, it's already been signed off on. But they did allegedly promise her other opportunities. Once you're a part of this project, you're going to have so many other opportunities. So, of course, when she told her story on TikTok, Natasha was asked, well, can you sing Jenny from the Block? And this is what she did. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the Block. Used to have a little, now I have a lot. No matter where I go, I know where I came from. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I'm still, I'm still Jenny from the block. Used to have a little, now I have a little. <laughs> <laughs> no matter where I go, I know where I came from. From the Bronx! And yes, that is definitely me saying from the Bronx. No, I'm not from the Bronx. I'm from Connecticut. Pause. Why couldn't J-Lo say from the Bronx. Why, why couldn't J-Lo say that? It's giving lazy. It's giving pl industry plant. Look, that's what people are saying about J-Lo now. They're saying that she's an industry plant. There is no, if you go back over J-Lo's history, there is no history of J-Lo being passionate about music. Passionate about dancing, but never passionate about music. And look, we know the stories of Christine Milian and stories of Ashanti where they turn up their background vocals and use their demo vocals instead of J-Lo's. So, yes, this story has been around before, but now we have Natasha talking about it. But I don't understand why J-Lo could not say, from the Bronx! <laughs> And for those that say, I don't hear it, I don't... Again, Homegirl is singing this live, okay? She's singing this live. This is not studio magic, all right? She then gives us a moment of singing here. But that's my voice. That's me. That's me. That's me. Me. Natasha, we need some music from you, girl. We need some music from you. But that's not it. <laughs> that's not it. We have more to, to talk about in regards to Jennifer Lopez and why this eclipse is kicking her ass. Well, people are dragging J-Lo. And if you know, I like Jennifer Lopez. I don't know her. I like what I've seen of jo Jennifer Lopez over the years, okay? And she's a Leo. Look, look, look. <laughs> hey, Leos. <laughs> Ooh, Janine says that Rosie Perez, who was the, you know, the head choreographer for the Fly Girls in, in Living Color, Janine says Rosie Perez and Kenny Ivory Waynes always said that she wasn't a good dancer. I don't know if I would agree with that. Because we've seen, that's the one thing that I will always say and you can't take away from J-Lo. Homegirl is a dancer. She is a performer. Okay? So people are also dragging, <laughs> people are also dragging J-Lo for her, um, her, her deli order. She was like, I like a ham and cheese with this and that. And then she's like, and an orange drink. And if you know, you know. So people were like, girl, what is this orange drink that you speak of? So people have been finding all kinds of reasons to hate on J-Lo. Sidebar, J-Lo apparently launched this tour in cooperation with, in partnership for this project. All right. However, allegedly ticket sales have been terrible. So now they're rebranding this tour as sort of like, oh, she's going to cover all her hits and stuff like that. Damn, J-Lo. <laughs> Damn. But there's more. So this story was actually told a week ago on TikTok. Shout out to TikTok, okay? But in preparation, I was already going to talk about J-Lo and the whole Natasha Ramos of it all, okay? Remember the Motown tribute that J-Lo did at the Grammys a few years back? Remember, a lot of people were like, why is J-Lo the centerpiece for this performance well one of the dancers spoke out about a week ago on tiktok and we've brought it here for you to see all right let me play it for you 
I have a J-Lo story. The year is 2019, and I'm dancing with Jennifer Lopez in the 2019 Grammys. And she was asked to do the Motown tribute, and she said yes. As we all know, Motown is a record label, is Black-owned, a home to the most iconic artists in history, Diana Ross, the Supremes, uh, The Temptations. Like, come on now, we know what's going on. I had worked with her previously before. I did a music video of her performances, I think Billboard Awards, some other stuff too, which, you know. Uh, I, I, it, it was cool, whatever. I was just very shocked she was going to do a Motown tribute at the Grammys, which is a award show for music. I walk into rehearsal the first day. Here was the first red flag for me. I walk into rehearsal the first day to the Motown tribute rehearsal. There was only three black people, including myself. Everybody else three. in the room was white or other you know, Hispanic, but there was three black people in the room and that was the dancers. Okay, we're, we move on, we press on. I'm noticing that even when we're doing formations, like we're, we're being placed on stage, but I'm talking about us as far as the black dancers, we're being pushed away from the center, which is where she is. I remember this, like I really remember this moment. It was me and the other black dancer that were opposites. We were right, it was her in the middle and then it was us two. She said, they have to move, they have to move. Okay, we move past that. We move past that. Right, we move past that. Uh, pause. Why are we moving past that? They got to move. The black dancers got to move for the Motown tribute? We probably now into like the third or fourth day of rehearsal, right? And that article came out saying, you know, why is J-Lo doing the Motown tribute? Like, I don't know if y'all remember that, but an article came out saying, I think it was like Variety, but somebody, something big, a publication came out asking why she's doing it. The, the team sat us down and they were like, I know you guys are seeing some negative press and blah, blah, blah. Chash, she gonna walk in and tell us. Y'all know what? We're gonna show them why I'm doing it. I remember she like raised her... <laughs> I was dying. I didn't know what was going on. I was so confused. I was so, so confused. Press on. That day of rehearsal was like actually easier. So like, I was just like chilling. At this point, y'all, I'm here. I'm doing my job. That's what I'm doing. Break for lunch, right? My hair at that time looked like this. So I'm there with the crack for at lunch. We're all talking. I think Jennifer's there. She's talking to us too. Actually kind of being funny or whatever. And literally looks at me dead in my face. She goes, so what are we going to do with your hair? Oh, yeah, girl, I get it. Listen, Listen I, get I get it. Is my hair Motown? No. Ain't nothing, nothing about this performance Motown. Motown. Ain't no Mo, ain't no town in here. Hi, I just want to take a brief intermission from the story to remind everybody that there was a salsa breakdown. A salsa breakdown. Pause. I, wait, there was a salsa breakdown during the Motown performance? J-Lo. First of all, why, you, why are you um, monitoring this man's hair? Honestly, the braids still could have worked for Motown. I get it, but anyways, pause. Um, but you worried about my braids. Also, I want to be very honest. Like, let's be clear. I was, it was 2019. I was really in my professional dancer bag. I was trying to dance behind artists and do the things. So I'm happy that that happened when it did, because if it was 2024, mm. I went to my friend who's a hairstylist. Shout out to Tiger Bomb. He's the best hairstylist in the world. I love him so much. He basically gave me like a custom like Motown look because I was so scared. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get fired. Like, I don't know what to do. So Tiger ends up giving me this look. And you can see which the I ended up loving. So shout out to Tiger. What really gagged me is I'm over here thinking like everybody's gonna be doing like a Motown, like a vibe, like, uh, but again, I'm, I remember what I said, there's only three black people. So I'm trying to think what's everybody else gonna do? Child, look at what they was doing. <laughs> and what really sucks is like, the black dancers that were on the job were like phenomenal. Like, I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all white and other females, like she was whooping ass, like eating those steps. Pushed out, pushed to the side, push, push, push. I'm doing my job. That's what I'm doing. Hold, hold on. Pushed out. Pushed out. Are we surprised? No, we're not surprised because. We've reported to you allegedly on TikTok as well, where someone was talking about how J Lo allegedly found out if she if she found out anyone was a Virgo, she wanted them out of there. She's a Leo. She didn't want to work with any Virgos. Now I'm really believing the Virgo story. All right, let me let me bring this back up. Is that we're on the job? We're like phenomenal. Like I'm not gonna put nobody's name out there, but like the female dancer that was in the female section with all 
white and other females, like, she was whooping ass, like, eating those steps. Pushed out, pushed to the side, push, push, push. Honestly, it was a line, she was all the way at the end. And I remember sitting on the side and being like, but not only, like, forget the fact that she's black, she's eating. And let's not forget the fact that she's black. It's a Motown tribute! So yeah, child, that's the last time Yenny from the block got any of my time, my energy, and, you know, ham and cheese on a roll with a bag of chips and an orange drink, if you know, you know. <laughs> Which goes back to what we were talking about. The other thing that J-Lo has been being dragged for in regards to her deli order. Oh, J-Lo. J- and I like J-Lo. It hurts me to report on this, but as we always say, everyone here on the channel, no matter if we like you, can get it. Pow, pow, pow. <laughs> but this story actually hurt my heart because I was like, oh. Her being from, from the Bronx or not being from the Bronx or not really representing the Bronx, didn't really grow up poor or anything like that. And none of that stuff. I'm like, whatever. But this particular story, it hurt my heart because it's like, you have, you're you in a position of power. You let your ego get in your way of being an actual ally for black folks. And that, that part of this story is very disheartening to me. Is that what you should have done was, I don't think this is a good look for me, y'all. I'm not Motown. My music is not Motown. But you decided because you're so career oriented <laughs> or OK, let me just say, because you're so solely focused on yourself and and what this is going to bring for you that you don't see that people are going to be like, girl, you're not Motown. You shouldn't be doing this. But look, she's a Leo. <laughs> no, Leo. Come on, Leo. <laughs> Because anyone else, like in your team, your team, like who are who do you have around you? Yes, people. Your team should have said to you, yeah, this is something that we should say no to. This is something that we should say no to. All right, but she didn't. And this was years ago. But to hear this story of where the allyship was lacking, because at the very least, the Grammys are at fault here as well. At the very least, you behind the scenes could have highlighted, even though there should have been more black dancers, well, okay, maybe you weren't in charge of hiring the dancers. Okay. You could have been like, you know what, let's make sure that we we highlight bl the black dancers here. And then asking about him and his hair, and then everybody else has a hair from whatever year this happened? Come on now. Come on now. Very disappointing to hear this from you, J-Lo, but this is why we should never hold any of these celebrities that are human just like us up to a standard than they're human. And we don't know these people. J-Lo, thank you for ruining this. One thing I will always say, though, I've never heard a terrible story about Mariah and her fans. Ooh. <laughs> Look, ooh. Or behind the scenes, to be honest with you. Empress, thank you so much for the uh, super chat. Empress says, the worst thing J-Lo did was sing live with Mark Anthony. That man can sing and she can't. And luckily, their child has Mark Anthony's voice and not J-Lo's. <laughs> Sorry, J-Lo. I don't think J-Lo really was ever passionate about music. When someone said this on TikTok recently, that the, if you go back in history, do we have footage of J-Lo singing before Selena, singing as a kid in performances, doing this or doing that? Do we have any of that footage? No. I bet you have footage of her dancing, though. She's definitely passionate. And I'm not going to take this away from J-Lo. She's a very talented entertainer. She's an, even a decent actress. And Actually, I would give her more than decent. She's a good actress. She did the damn thing in Selena. But other than that, okay. <laughs> Look, okay. <laughs> All right, y'all, that's it. I am all talked out. I've been talking for two hours, but that's what we normally do with Tuesday Takeover. Over two hours, all right? <laughs> Ch Chantel says, uh, I'm Aaliyah and we don't claim her. Check her chart. <laughs> I have. I did a collaboration with um, Femme Taro. Go, go, go. We think we did too in regards to Benefer. We talk about their chart, so be sure to check that out if you haven't. <laughs> 
All right. Um, and we recently did uh, a collaboration with Nancy, uh, a Vedic astrologer, talking about the eclipse and the Mercury retrograde is current, currently going on. That is a podcast exclusive. So be sure to check that out on the Kempire podcast, on Apple Podcasts, and on Spotify. While you're there, don't forget to give us a five star rating. And, 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 and don't forget today's live show is sponsored by our friends over at Rose Forever. Roses that will last you at least a year, at least a year. You know, I have a lot of them. I got some in the studio. I have some around the house. I love my Rose Forever. Mother's Day is right around the corner, but spring is here. We're getting beautiful weather here in New York right now. All right. So, oh, thank El Michelle. Thank you for the reminder. I forgot to talk about Latasha. So we're not done. One more story and then I'm out of here. I don't have a lot to say about this anyway because I just wanted to give you guys an update. We did a separate video talking about Escape's tour. So as you know, we, we celebrated when Escape and SWV announced that they were going on tour. They were going on tour and all of a sudden we found out through our friends over at Straight From The A and their exclusive that Latasha Scott was uh, not suing, but sent a legal letter to Mona Me uh, Entertainment, that is Mona Scott Young's company, and to Live Nation, okay? In that legal letter, Latasha says that she was surprised to learn that Live Nation, whom escaped, had contracted to perform on numerous occasions, contracted with individuals, and is publicly advertising the escape mark to promote live musical performance for a series of concerts during Queens of R&B tour without Latasha's consent. In addition to failing to obtain consent, you have also failed to re even reach out to Latasha to agree on financial terms to use for uh, to, for use of the mark, as well as discuss her performance. They don't want you on the tour, Latasha. <laughs> So as you know, if you watch the Queens of R&B reality show, we recapped it. It was some of the, our best content. We had a good time recapping that show and all the stories that came out, including Tamika Scott, Latasha Scott's sister, accusing her and Latasha's husband, Rocky Bivens, of stealing thousands, like 30,000, probably more, allegedly, from Tamika in music residuals and other damning allegations. All right. It should be noted that Tamika Scott is a co-owner of this trademark of Escape. All right. And a lot of people, when they heard the story, they said, just change the name. Well, Escape has released a statement in regards to this. All right. This is what Escape had to say in regards to Latasha's, uh, Latasha's accusations that they're using this uh, trademark without her permission. All right. So they released this statement. Let me find it. Here we go. Here we go. So according to the statement that they posted on social media, they said a co-owner of a trademark is unable to maintain an infringement action against another co-owner of the same trademark. Again, Tamika Scott is a co-owner of this trademark. Sidebar, allegedly, Latasha didn't pay for this either. All right. And sidebar, allegedly, according to Funky Dineva, in, in regards to multiple sources reaching out to him, Latasha and Rocky are having money troubles, allegedly. I am the fifth member. How about that? And allegedly, the fifth member may have had something to do with some of the uh, alleged stealing. Allegedly. <sighs> okay. But sidebar, Tamika allegedly paid for this trademark. And Latasha didn't. So technically, she's only on here because Tamika paid for it, allegedly. <sighs> so he said a co-owner of a trademark is unable to maintain an infringement action against another co-owner of the same trademark. Okay? Each co-owner has the right to exercise its trademark rights, including granting licenses to third parties, i.e. Live Nation and Mona Me Entertainment. A valid licensee of one co-owner of a trademark cannot be liable, liable to another co-owner for infringement. They're saying all that to say that Tamika has every right to use this trademark of escape any way that she likes. And Latasha Scott cannot sue her or come at her for it. 
Okay. Oh, is that where I heard it? Um, Destiny says that um, that the, Tamika said it on Candy Speak on it. I can't remember everything. <laughs> Look. I am the fifth member. How about that? I can't remember all the details because we covered a lot during that situation. I couldn't remember if, if she said that. So that might be, um, I, I, will, I will trust Destiny here in regards to that Tamika did say it. Okay. Um, Duran says, did Tamika pay it alone? Well, here's the thing. I don't know if that will stand in core in regards to, yes, I, I am the sole owner of this trademark technically because I paid for all of it. Not if you allowed to, uh, Latasha to sign her name to this information as a co-owner. However, according to Escape statement in regards to, to this, they're, first of all, they're saying the tour will be happening regardless. And I'm sure they've already thought about this. So they were already prepared to release a statement that... We have one of the co-owners, Tamika. We're good. And we're going to make a bag. I obviously think that Latasha is feeling butthurt. She's feeling hurt because, look, allegedly, according to Funky Dineva sources, she, her and Brocky are, you know, having money troubles, allegedly. And you remember the video that she did on that um, bus? Apparently, she was allegedly, according to Funky Dineva, <laughs> a lot of allegedly here the bus company reached out to him or one of the former employees of the bus company reached out my brain is working like wait wait a second who said that what did she say that you did <laughs> my brain is working the fact that i'm able to remember all of this stuff right now give me my credit give me my credit <laughs> so the someone what's it donna <laughs> i think it was donna formerly employed at the bus company reached out and said, well, I can, I, I can say this cause I don't work for them anymore. Allegedly that they couldn't pay for the bus and they were kicked off the bus. Fuck your flowers. Oh, damn. <laughs> they were kicked off the bus. Ain't no good gonna come to you. Latasha Rocky. Ain't no good gonna come to you. Am I surprised that they're having money troubles? Allegedly. Nope. Look, nope. Ain't no good gonna come to you. And I'm sure that Latasha probably didn't... No, she probably did know, but I'm sure this this legal letter that was sent from them in regards to the trademark infringement was from Rocky. He, he is her manager. But as you know, she's been trying to pursue a solo career. Someone joked on social media. Somehow, she's going to turn... Latasha's going to turn this into all about Candy and how Candy ruined her career. Uh, and from that solo album that she was supposed to get from Jermaine Dupri 30 years ago. Fuck your flowers. <laughs> Joe, well, thank you. Thank you, Joe. You did not have to do this. Joe says, um, I pay my respects to JLo. She may not be a good singer, but she can dance. And she's an amazing concert performer. She's also a great actress with Selena made in Manhattan. <laughs> Hustlers, yes, she was good in Hustlers, and her award-winning movie with her now husband, Ben uh, G uh, Geely? G Geely? <laughs> I can't pronounce anything today, y'all. Forgive me. I got a shot in my shoulder today. I'm still in pain. <laughs> Feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for me. Feel sorry for me. <laughs> I forgot about that movie. <laughs> <sighs> Anyways. Anyways, thank you, Joe, for the super chat. We appreciate your support constantly here on the channel, even when you're shading me and throwing me under the bus. Mm -hmm. And thank you guys so much for reminding me, because, you know, look, Tuesday Takeover is a lot to cover. So sometimes I do forget stories, but I'm glad that we did not forget to talk about this Latasha Scott and Escape situation. The Escape Tour with SWV, the Queens of R&B, featuring Maya, Total, and 702 is going on tour this summer along with our friends over at Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes, Sierra, and special guests Timbaland will be also be going on tour. Maxwell and Jasmine Sullivan will be going on tour. We have a busy summer, and I, I wish nothing but the best for everyone on tour. All right? Everyone have a fantastic rest of your Tuesday. I will see you all. I might do a special live tomorrow just for callers to call in about Real Housewives of Potomac. You let me know if you want to see that. Okay? All right, y'all. Bye, y'all. 
And be sure to check out my recap with DJ Richie Sky from yesterday in regards to Real Housewives of Potomac and our Summer House Martha's Vineyard recap as well. All right. Therese says, I got my tickets to... Thank you for the remind. Y'all reminding me of everything. I keep forgetting. But you see the scroll for those that are scrolling. But if you're listening to this, don't forget, we're coming to Boston May 30th. We're coming to Atlanta July 12th. We're coming to Nashville the day before, July 11th. And then we will be in Seattle. So if you live in Portland, if you live in Vancouver, come to that show in Seattle August 30th. The Kempire After Dark live tour is here. All right, get your tickets today if you haven't already. I will see you guys soon. Let's get out of here, y'all. Bye. Mm -mm 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 -mm.